is live and share as we welcome our audience on the TV here. Uh, this is a circuit that could provide a little bit of redemption for the pool sitting not being the best two racers for the number 10 Cadillac team. No, and for Ricky and Jordan Taylor both, this is a track that is especially one that they want to win at because neither of them have ever claimed victory at Road America in IMSA competition. They both finished third. That was last year. Ricky also finished third back in 2011, but they don't have that coveted win. Well, they didn't have a win at Daytona or Sebring before the year began either. They got both of those this year. So if there's going to be a track where they can get this championship battle back to the point where they want it, it's going to be here at Road America. They have overcome adversity so far this year, John. They can do it again here in Wisconsin. Yeah, and in uh, Prototype Challenge, it's been a very dominant performance this year by the 38 Performance Tech car. They're on pole position again with James French. GTLM, I stick a pin in the entry list, uh, Jeremy. It's the two Chip Ganassi racing cars have locked out the front row. But frankly, any one of those eight cars, Corvette at the moment, not seemingly on the pace during qualifying, but you never count out the Pratt & Miller guys in Corvette racing during a race. They always seem to go better come race time, don't they? Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, speaking to, the, to a couple of those guys just a little while ago, yeah, they, they might not have the ultimate pace here, but their strategies are always good, and they are hoping for a little bit of rain to even things out a bit. In GT Daytona, Lamborghini, BMW, Porsche, Lexus, Audi, Acura, Ferrari, and Mercedes are the top eight. That's manufacturer from manufacturer from manufacturer. And in qualifying, it was barely seven tenths of a second between those top eight cars. So again, if you've made your predictions for the IHD ProteinPredictor.com uh, this weekend, you're a braver person than I am because frankly, I can't pick a winner there, Jeremy. No, 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 absolutely wide open, tremendous racing. We have seen all the way through this season in that class. Uh, no reason to expect anything other than that this afternoon. So two hours and 40 minutes on the clock. This racetrack is among the driver's favorites, as Jeremy was saying. It is great history, great racing behind us, and great racing in the now and the future as well for Road America. We're live trackside, IMSA Radio and IMSA TV together as we are in the final moments of calm before the storm that will be the Continental Tire Road Race Showcase here at roadamerica.com. Already this weekend, the schedule for next year's championship has been announced by President of IMSA, Scott Atherton. 
We're back at Rhodes, uh, excuse me, back at Mid Ohio in May for another great celebration of everything IMSA. And that's before we've even got into the last third of this season. Plenty of good news coming from IMSA with new teams to come from Roger Penske's organisation with Acura. We'll have Mazda Racing Team Joost here next year and a long-term commitment to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca also announced over the last couple of days. And a second car for JDC Miller Motorsports next year, so next year from Minnesota. So there's another team to favour here, number 85 car. That's the bright yellow machine that sits on the fourth row of the grid as the prototypes come to the green flag. The photographers are lined up there, mass ranks of the photographers, the green flags are there. In the 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsport car goes steaming round the outside back into second place, the 52 car. That was an awesome piece of driving because Scott Sharp got a brilliant start. It's Cadillac, Ligier Gibson, Nismo Ligier, Nismo, Nismo Ligier in the first, second, third and fourth as they head down the middle straight, if you will, here. And Gutierrez already under pressure again by Scott Sharp. That Nismo looks quick today, but Gutierrez has the Inside line, that's the favourite line for the left-hander, it's turn number five. Yeah, those uh, Nissans have great straight line speed, but the youngster, 21-year-old from Monterey, Mexico, he is racy in these early stages. A really good start by the youngster there, Jose Gutierrez. And in GTLM, Alexander Sims has got up amongst the Fords. In fact, so is the two Porsches. Great start from Jimmy Bruni and Patrick Peely, and respectively the 912 and 911. And Ryan Briscoe has started on the outside of the front row. has been bumped down to, five, to fifth position. And Jesse Krohn holds the lead in GTLM. T. Daytona from Patrick Lindsay for Porsche number 73. Jerome Mull, the pole sitter, down to third. So a big mix-up in the GT categories, which started just a little bit behind the prototypes. Ricky Taylor, though, what a start from the Cadillac. They've had a little bit of contact that has cost them points in the last two races. Jeremy, he got out of harm's way quickly there and has got a second and a half lead as we're not even through the first four miles yet. Did exactly what he wanted to do there. Good Jose Gutierrez are not able to get the heat quite in time as much as he would like despite that really uh, bold maneuver at the first corner and down at turn five and Ricky Taylor taking advantage of that doing exactly what he wanted to do get out in front and hopefully control the pace of the race so across the line for the first time it's going to be close to two seconds in the prototype lead by the black Cadillac number 10 from Gutierrez who's got about eight tenths of a second on Scott Sharp and Van Overbeck in the tequila patrol Here's the GTs coming through now, and Alexander Sims is trying to get a little bit of a drag down the inside of the first corner. The two Porsches have had a great start. And Jimmy Bruni, in just his, what, third race, fourth race for Porsche, after his uh, somewhat uh, controversial transfer, if you will, from Ferrari. Jimmy locked into a five-year contract with Ferrari, of which he'd served one year and effectively bought out of that by Porsche to get him into the team with Lawrence Van Tour. It's the Nehemiah story to PSG all over again, except in sports car racing, he is one of GT superstars. And Jimmy Bruni already with a pole position to his name for Porsche. 66-25. No. 66-25, 9-1-2 and 9-11 are the top four in GTLM. In GT Daytona, Jesse Krohn, for BMW and the Turner yellow and blue car. He's it out. Gone. He has lit the afterburners, military settings, and he's gone. Patrick Lindsay holding on to second place with Jerome Mull, who was our pole sitter in the Lamborghini, remember, the 16 change racing car. He's half a second further back, and the best of the rest is Scott Pruitt in the number 15 Lexus. And if you haven't been keeping up, there's been a little bit of change, a bit of musical chairs for Lexus as far as the drivers is concerned. Uh, Scott Pruitt driving with uh, Jack Hawks with th this weekend, and Robert Alon is with Sage Karam in the other car. Yeah, and those two cars should be fast. I saw Tri Paul Genelosi, the team principal there at 3GT Racing, just before the start. He was telling me, hey, we've got to stop beating ourselves. He's right, they've had penalties in the several of the most recent races. We've got to wait and get away from that. We have had five minutes of racing and 
Ricky Taylor doing what we saw in the first five races of the season. And the number 10 Cadillac was extraordinarily competitive. Won the first five on the bounce since then. The two of the Cadillacs have won a race apiece. Nothing other than Caddy on the top step of the podium in prototype. But my goodness, it's been close. And I can't imagine that that's going to go through the whole season in GT Daytona. It is still Jesse Krohn who, as Jeremy said, has made his bid for freedom. But in GTLM, Dirk Muller now by over half a second to Alexander Sims in second place. And Alex is uh, in clear air at the moment. In the meantime, the 24, Martin Tomczyk, is fighting his way through the GT Daytona field. Remember, that car started at the back because of an engine change, Jeremy. And already Tomczyk is up to second place in GTD. I want to see the onboard footage from him after the race. I bet that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's all sorts of good shuffling go around going on here in the early stages. Number 48, Lamborghini, that's moving its way up the back, up uh, through the field in GT Daytona as well, up onto the tail of nine, nine, number 93 car, really following the number 93 car, because that too started towards the back of the field. But they're in a long train of cars there, and all these different manufacturers, boy, they are so closely matched. Yeah, Catherine Legg coming through the field as well in the 93. Akira, she is up to 10th position uh, in that car, after that car was uh, reduced to many of its component parts after a nasty looking accident caught the edge of the Canada corner curb in one of the uh, practice sessions and car having had uh, substantial surgery in the last few days but the 93 car now with a little bit of white on the front of that Nouvelle Blue Pearl colour scheme brand new brand, brand new Vell for this weekend and in fact, Catherine is already up behind her teammate, Osnegby Jr. in the Valencia Red Pearl colour. Both streetcar colours are new for this weekend for the Michael Shank Racing NSX team. You'll see the little white smiley face on the front of the blue number 93. It wasn't necessarily de designed to be like that, but I think it works, to be quite honest. 155.5 by Ricky Taylor on just the third lap. He is getting the hammer down. It's Taylor time. More power for those of a certain age. We'll remember the significance of that. And the 10 car has disappeared. 3.8 seconds. Has he found a shortcut here? That's extraordinary, Jeremy, in a weekend that has been so very very close this is the first time of course we've had really full warm dry conditions and the cadillacs run extremely skinny in terms of aero that's mandated by the manufacturer by the uh, series by imza here as part of the balance of performance because they were concerned at the amount of speed that they could take through the corners but here at road america of course as long as it stays dry, that's actually an advantage to them. Yeah, it is, because uh, the, 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 the Cadillac certainly has plenty of grunt, even with the mandated uh, higher gear ratios coming off the corners. So it's a plenty fast, that car. And Ricky Turley, look, he's just driving on another planet at the moment. He's so cool, so calm, so collected, so confident right now. And he's using every inch of that confidence to bring the pace out of this car. He's edging away from Gutierrez. But Gutierrez is only on there in second place. Interesting to to Jans Van Overbeek last time around. Did manage to get away ahead of his team. Teammate Scott Sharp. Two side by side there. Number 90 and 85 heading towards turn one. The 85 Michel Goldberg has the inside line on Mark Goosens. Whoa! But uh, Goosens hold along, holds on around the outside, and Goldberg there kind of kind of chickened out a little bit and just made sure he didn't do anything, uh, make a mistake there. Discretion, the better part of valor there for the uh, for the. Toronto-based uh, Russian, and I think that was a smart move, but uh, they clearly that number 85 car is fast. Adam has tweeted to us out into radio and said, can we please pick up all of America and import it to the UK? I love this place, it's a stopping circuit. Uh, you'll get no argument, no from, argument anyone. from anyone there. Anyone wishing to build a racetrack, look at the topography, look at the layout, it's beautiful how the local, uh, the local landscape has been used to work the race course through it. Watkins Glen is very similar as is Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Think of Alton Park in the UK and Brands Hatch as well. This is a beautiful parkland circuit. 
That's 640 acres on the site, plenty of places to camp, and that's been taken up this weekend despite the somewhat less than pleasant weather. And uh, fair play to the hardy supporters and fans here who have been here since uh, the weather really was nasty on Thursday. And I've chat with quite a few of them around the paddock and the circuit when I was uh, arriving here in the early part of the week. And today, just decided to batten down the hatches when it was bad. It's been paying them dividends now. Great weather and fantastic motor racing with the battle for fifth, sixth and seventh, uh, separated by uh, barely a car's length between all of them. In fact, add to that eighth because Christian Filippaldi is closing in across the line. Ricky Taylor completes lap number five. He's got 3.8 seconds on the rest of the field, but following Jose Gutierrez in the 52 car, Johannes van Overbeck's only half a second back. And then there's about five seconds back to Eric Curran, who's in that 31 red Cadillac. And the Oops. 93, the rebuilt 93, Catherine Legg has spun. And that looks like on the exit of turn eight to me, Jeremy. And she'd worked her way up to ninth position. Wide-eyed Catherine Legg at the moment as she's watching the field go by. Oh, she got help. She got help from the number 48. And Madison Snow, Madison Snow has turned the 93 around. Catherine on the radio saying she couldn't get it started, but she's kept her head and now gets first gear and pulls off into the right direction, round through the carousel. Well, it's not disastrous, but the leader is right there. She's going to drop off the lead lap overall, but she'll still stay on the GTD lead lap, having dropped to the back of the field. Yeah, she will also uh, not not uh, certainly not uh, the end of the of the game for Catherine Legg. She, she goes off going in as you say, still in the lead lap, so that's just fine. Uh, note here that uh, the gap from first to second seemed to have stabilised last time around, uh, but uh, Jans van Overbeck, he was the guy on the charge. He's just set the fastest lap of the race a couple of laps ago, it was a 155.890. Uh, getting within half a second already of the track record set last year by Tristan Nunez at a 155.4. A fantastic day to be here at Road America. We've uh, I've been here for, well, the best part of a week now. Arrived in uh, Chicago on Monday afternoon, went down to Autobahn to do some work with the MLS and Audi, which is where we picked up the Shakedown for the Visit Florida number 90 car. Mark Goosen's currently sitting in sixth position in that blue leash here, Gibson. And love this part of the world. Fantastic scenery. Uh, you don't get this much green without a bit of water. We've had rather too much of it at times this week, but thank goodness we have got good racing conditions now. Johannes van Overbeck begins to turn the screws on Jose Gutierrez, particularly in the Last section of the circuit, and he's closed in again. Catherine Legg pointing in the right direction, down at turn five, showing in 15th position in GT Daytona. That's the green 15 in LEDs on the side of the car. Clearly shining out, even in the bright sunshine here. Eric Curran, as they go through the hurry downs area, Catherine will stay at the left. Eric Curran is coming up on the right-hand side in the red and white Cadillac. And then Mark Goosen's trying to make an advantage there. Oh, and right on the outside, Misha Goitberg just getting pushed off the circuit for a moment. Catherine having nowhere to go there. She's got the leaders coming through. Christian Fittipaldi was right with Misha there as well, looking to take the seventh position uh, into the pit lane for Madison Snow. And that will be presumably a drive through for the contact with the 93. That's been confirmed, thank you. So, Snow just being a little bit ambitious in charging back through the field in that 48 car. If you weren't with us at the start, 48 car put to the back of the grid after a technical infringement. The team find team points and driver points also docked from the Paul Miller Racing team. And that car starting at the back of the grid. Madison Snow just a little over exuberant earlier on turned around the 93 car and that is why uh, he is in the pit lane now just uh, the slightest of touches on the left rear of the 93 
but enough to spin that car around. They're on the ragged edge of adhesion, Jeremy. They're not leaving anything there. It's not as if you were just pootling around a, a car park and uh, the cars are on the edge of being unsettled anyway, and a tiny little touch will, is enough to turn you around. It's it not, is. It's not, not nothing um, uh, malicious there, no. but it, it, it did, did disadvantage Catherine. So yeah. that, I think that's a reason, that's a perfectly fine penalty. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, in GT Daytona, Jesse Crone in number 96 turned a most what BMW. Uh, no surprise to me, actually, but he's, oops, there's no, one of the uh, uh, number 20 bar one PC cut off into the tyre wall. Just a bit, while that may well bring out a full course caution, that's it. Where is that? Uh, he, full, full course caution is out. Is that the outside of the carousel? I think it might be turn 13. I'm not sure. Anyhow, uh, go, yeah, go, okay, full course caution is out. What I was going to say, though, is that Jesse Krohn, uh, it's okay, it's turn 14, uh, has pulled out a yeah. uh, significant margin of over five seconds over the rest of the field in GT Daytona. The other note I was going to point out was that number 24, Martin Jomjic, having started from the back, as we see, uh, that uh, bar one car into the tyre barrier pretty heavily. Um, number 24 car, sorry, from the back, not only has it worked its way through all the GTD cars, also overtaking uh, at least one of the Corvettes. Yes. So made up a lot of ground on that Corvette. Number 24 car, seriously quick, has set the, hasn't set the fastest lap, the fastest lap of the race in GT Daytona at the moment but to our uh, pace setter, Dirk Mueller. Yeah. The Diggler, as he was named a long time ago in LMS competition, driving for a different manufacturer. Dirk looking as fit as a butcher's dog's personal trainer this season. Never looked unfit, frankly, but my goodness me, he's enjoying his racing this year and he's driving very well indeed. Fit in body means fast of mind normally. Uh, the team have been talking to Don Yount, uh, Jeremy. He's fine. I told him not to move the car till the safety team get there and they have the toe strap is on the back of the car it will be pulled out backwards hello if you're just joining us you've missed a fraught first 13 minutes or so with uh, ricky taylor pulling out over almost a four second lead at the head of the field from pole position in the continental tire road race showcase live on imsa radio and imsa tt and after that uh, pit, pit stop for the penalty, car number 48, uh, that was assessed as a result of the contact with number 93, ironically, it's resumed directly ahead of number 93 car <laughs> on the racetrack. Uh, those two, are, they're, they're a lap behind the overall leader at the moment, but uh, shortly they will get the, uh, the pass around because they are still on the, on the same lap as their, the class leaders in GT Daytona, so they will be able to cycle past the safety car and move around to the back of the pack. Yes, and Catherine Legg there just pulling up on the front straight to the side of the 48 car and uh, just letting uh, Madison know that um, she was not best pleased with uh, how that had happened. Pops up uh, down the inside, actually, into the corner at turn three. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, they, they've clearly been given the word to move past and for some reason, the 48 car didn't. So, Catherine, Catherine did. Fair enough. Yeah. Odd. I just wonder if there was a little touch there well, as Catherine to went by. Yeah. And that will be being looked at as well by the IMSA officials. But uh, the wave by started, and it's up to the individual teams. The IMSA don't shout out the numbers of the cars on the wave round here. They say, if you are entitled to a wave round, you go now. And Catherine was told that by the team. She obviously knew it as well. She got on the right-hand pedal and off she went. Bit of damage to... Madison Snow, a bit sleepy on that one. Bit of damage to the right front of the wheel and engineering racing car, the 31 Cadillac, the red car. The mm. front dive plane on the right-hand side, part of the aerodynamics of that car, helping it turn into the corners, was at a, uh, a not-standard angle, shall we say, for that. It's uh, sticking out a bit. There's been a bit of contact there. It's barely hanging on by one fastening. The left-hand side is flat, and it's got its little tether to the front part of the splitter. Meantime, John Yount is in the pit lane for a new front end. Shea Adam brings us this Continental Tire pit lane report. They might need a little bit more work on this car, John, than they're anticipating, because when they took the old nose off, they ripped it, and one of the... Um, one of 
one of the nuts that holds down the front end of the car, I was struggling to think of the word for that, uh, they actually ripped through the bodywork and the nut remains in the front of the nose on the bottom side. They do have a new nose uh, component ready to go. Now they've realized they are going to take that off as well and put the new one on. Uh, Don Yoon shut the car off. He is second in the PC championship, but when you've got James French and Pato Award having the season that they are, it's a long way back for second. This, of course, will have to be a follow-up penalty because they came in when the pits are closed, but a uh, little bit more work going on for this number 20. Pits are not yet signified as being open this time around. Are we still under quickie yellow, John? Are we still 30 minutes from the beginning yeah, of the race? Exactly so, Shea. Good pick up and the race radio uh, from race control telling the teams exactly that. The pits will not be opened. The safety car lights are out. The Corvette C7 pulls away from the front of the field, so Ricky Taylor has it all to do. Again, the big 6.2 Torquay V8 engine against the 4.2, the 90 degree V8, 600 horsepower from the Gibson. Round about the same, at least, I would think, from the Cadillac. And, oh, great jump off the final corner by Ricky Taylor. Of course, he knew when he was going to put the throttle down, and Jose Gutierrez didn't. And what was three-tenths of a second will be doubled as they go across the line. Johannes van Overbeck is Scott Sharp. He's teammate for company, 10, 52, 22, and 2. Then there's a bit of a battle on as... Misha Goikberg has a look at Mark Goosens, who's pulled that number 90 car up into sixth position. Then come the GT cars. My goodness, it's been all action so far. And the man on the moving GT, Martin Tomczyk, former touring car driver, all over the back at the moment of the second of the Corvettes. And that is Ollie Gavin, Yardley Hastings' finest sports car driver, with his hands full at the moment. Down towards turn number five under the Sargento Cheese Bridge. Tomczyk not quite close enough. Nice uh, little cushion for Jesse Kron in the 96 turn of BMW. He's got cars between himself and the rest of the GTD field. As action at turn five, one of our action areas always has been. And through there, when Oz Negri Jr. made up a position at least, He's got between the Lexus, Scott Pruitt, and Robert Alonso starting those. So I think that's odds up into fourth position. Might even be snatched third there as he went through, diving down the inside under relatively cool tyres into five. That was a smashing move. Yeah, I think Robert Alonso lost a few positions there. We can't have a 14. The cars. Uh, yeah, they lost a couple of positions there. So a good restart uh, again by Ricky Taylor, as one would expect. And Dirk Mueller holds on in GTLM. James French from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, way out in front in the PC class. Running a very lonely race. He'd be kind of <laughs> grateful for this yellow. So at least he gets someone to uh, someone he can see either in front or behind him. At yeah, this without stage. a set of binoculars, yes, yeah. good point. Uh, GTT extraordinarily close in qualifying with the top eight positions filled by eight different manufacturers and around about seven tenths of a second. The big news there is the changing of equipment by the 50 team they have been running a amg gt3 all season they've swapped back to their porsche they feel that is a better suited car in the current bop and on this circuit and in fairness they are ahead of all of the mercedes at the moment so that at the moment is paying off for them there is one porsche ahead of them the rest of the Porsche behind, as are the two remaining Mercedes, the 33 and the 75. Now, the battle in GT Le Mans is for the lead. Alex Sims in the 25 BMW, a different looking car, sits higher in the air than the very svelte Chip Ganassi GT ahead of it. The Ford very flat, the BMW much taller. As they head through turn five and six, and in fact, it's exactly the same battle. Slightly further back down the field now, as Ryan Briscoe has Martin Tomczyk. Fifth and sixth between those two pairs of Ford and BMWs are the two Porsches. 912, Jimmy Bruni ahead of Patrick Peeler now, and in third position. Number 93, Acura into the pit lane. I'm, I'm guessing this is a penalty for running into the back 
Oh, no, it's not. It's service for this car. Shit, Adam. They're going to give her four new tires and a bit of fuel. Uh, there was a question in race control whether or not Catherine did pass Madison Snow when she got up alongside of him to let him know how displeased she was because that would have been a penalty. They're actually working on the car, John. Uh, the nose on the left-hand side has been wedged in quite a bit, and they were worried about a tire getting cut down as well. Now, all of this bodywork, remember, as Andy Lally told us in the uh, countdown to green, was put on the car in about 10 hours' time. The team did a fantastic job to repair the car as a whole. They did need to pull it back out just a little bit. Now they've put a new left Continental tire on the front. The car comes off the air jacks. Waiting for it to fire. There it goes. And now Catherine goes back out. So now she'll have, well, she'll have her work cut out for her to keep in front of the rest of the GTD field as they come by. Yeah, she's going to come out just behind the GTLM cars and she's going to struggle to stay on the lead lap. Here comes the Yessi Cron now and she will go a lap down into the first corner. It's the, uh, the screen, the uh, storm guard on the left-hand front air intake that had been displaced when she just clipped the back of Madison Snow's uh, 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 Madison Snow's Lamborghini. And into the pit lane has come the number three of Jan Magnussen. This is not on schedule. No, it's not, but they're going to do fuel and tires. They need something a little bit different to try and throw them off of the uh, pattern that everybody else is running. Antonio Garcia is getting installed in that number three Corvette. They've already changed all four of the Michelins, waiting for the fueling to finish. It shouldn't need that much fuel. Hasn't been out there that long. Drops off the air jacks. Antonio goes out. Wow, maybe a two change. And Catherine Lang has come straight back into the paddock at the back of turn five. That looks like a more serious problem from Catherine, still wearing the uh, the sticker on the front of her helmet for Justin Wilson there. Just noticed that on the on board. Right rear is still broken on that car. So there's an issue with the right rear on that car as per the team radio. At the front of the field, Ricky Taylor completes lap 12. He's got about uh, a couple of seconds now on Jose Gutierrez. The number 10 Cadillac from the 52 Ligier in second place. Delara, Ligier, Ligier, Delara, Ligier, Orica, Delara. The engines being Cadillac, Gibson, Nismo, Nismo, Cadillac, Gibson, Gibson, Cadillac. Yeah, and all those cars running in a train there. Yeah, very uh, close. Nothing to choose between them. In fact, uh, all of them on that last lap turning laps within well, a couple of tenths of a second of each other. Close also in GT Le Mans. The number 66 car still leads from Alexander Sims in the BMW, and the two Porsches and the Ford, then the BMW of Martin Tomjic, and Oliver Gavin doing his best to hang on there, but not quite able to, it would appear, at this stage of the game. And that number number three car, um, I'm assuming that they reckon they can get to the end of the race from here with one on more. two pit... On, uh, one more pit stop. No, two more pit stops it'll take. Right, OK. But there's only a 10-minute uh, minimum for drivers in GTLM, so Garcia could stay in the car all the way to the end, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 that's not a, not, a, not a sure at this stage in the race now, so uh, for any of the uh, pro categories, either prototypes or GT Le Mans, in the GT Daytona, the drivers have to complete a minimum of 45 minutes. Yeah. That is designated, as is the prototype challenge, as a pro-am class. And therefore, you've got slightly different drive times to worry about in the pro classes. It's uh, very much just get out there and race, and that's what Ricky Taylor's doing at the head of the field. In GT Le Mans, Dirk Muller from pole position has a red number one on the side panel of the Chip Ganassi Racing red, white and blue GT. Low, svelte and very fast round here, though. Red number one means he's leading the GT LM category. And just back to that thought about the Corvette number three making its pit stop, uh, we, uh, you, we, you heard us say, if you're not familiar with this series particularly, uh, if uh, a caution period comes within the first half hour or the last half hour of the race, the pits are not opened for, for, driver, for teams to come on and take on service. Any time after that, they are. However, if there is a full course caution, the pits are then closed. So if you've already made your pit stop, then you won't, at this stage in the game, let's say, 
Uh, the number three car's already made its first best option. If this is a caution with the next 15, 20 minutes, all the other class leaders in GTLM are going to go come into the pit to take on service. And that is allowed, you know, allowed number three car to move to the very front of the pack because it is still on the lead lap with the other GTLM contenders. Uh, and that's a tactic that you can employ here, Jeremy, that you couldn't see at Lime Rock because the you, you roll the dice there because the lap is so short that you will drop off the lead lap in class coming in for a green flag pit stop but at 4.048 miles that gives you much more strategic options in far as, as far as taking that early pit stop here for Corvette so that's a very good point Mark Goosens gets a good lap last time around at 56.8 as he closes in within half a second of Eric Curran for 5th and 6th that's the Works Cadillac versus the Ligier the VFL visit Florida racing car. New to that Ligier chassis, still learning. They're going to be a force by Petit Le Mans, if not sooner, I feel. Three races, including this one for the prototype field. There's a four race run to the end of the season for the GTs because it is an old GT celebration of uh, endurance racing coming up in three weeks' time at VIR. Extended coverage again here on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV, of course, as we head to that next round of the championship with a full supporting cast of races too. Oh, miles off at the first corner for Jan Magnussen. Uh, check that, it's uh, Tony Garcia, isn't it? They got into that car. And that may well just be raising an eyebrow in race control, which is behind us. Made no attempt at all to stay on the track in turn one. He won't get away yeah, with that too many times. Yeah, well, they're not too worried about that here because there's no gain in time to be made because it's a lot longer to go off at that point in time. I was talking to the uh, race director about that the other day, and he said they're not too worried about the track limits things here as much as they are some other circuits. I'm sure if he does it on a regular basis, it might be uh, race and eyebrows, but right now it generally isn't quicker, uh, and it's just a, a, a way to make sure you don't damage the car. Yeah, and, it, and of course, you're not allowed to improve your position Correct. by doing that. So if you went round the outside in the act of overtaking someone, then that would be frowned upon. It's about gaining time or distance yeah. uh, when you go off the track. Relative it, it, to competitors. Yeah, yes, exactly right. Now, it is a longer way, but if you don't break as much for the first corner and you take more speed through it, effectively opening the corner out, then that will be getting looked at, and the lap times will be getting looked at as well from Garcia. Uh, splits are there for everyone to see as well. In the prototype category, Ricky Taylor has checked out again and has built a 4.6 second lead over Jose Gutierrez. He's got his hands full at the moment with Johannes Van Overbeck, Scott Sharp, Eric Curran, Misha Goitberg and Mark Goosens and Christian Filippaldi. So second down to with. If you took the number 10 Cadillac out, we've got a cracking battle for the rest of the prototype field. Uh, Ricky Taylor has disappeared into the distance. He's about to come past us and does so now. And I will tell you when Jose Gutierrez comes by, there he is, there's set third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. I couldn't get it out as quick enough, Jeremy, as they went by at full speed here, getting on for 170 miles an hour top speed around this circuit. And they get close to that two or three times here with the length of the straights. Just over two hours and seven minutes to go. And Ricky Taylor, doing what we've seen him do many times this year already. What a talent these two Taylor boys are. Yes, you can balance the car's performance, but you should never, and in fact, Imza will never, they have told us this many times, balance the team's performance or indeed the driver's performance. And the Taylor effect is taking control of this race right now. Yeah, and number 85 car's finally got past number 90, hasn't it? Uh, that's... Uh Good uh, move there then by Michel Goitberg ahead of Mark Goosens. Uh, further back, it's still the, day, the uh, BMW of Turner Motorsport that leads in GT Daytona. Yes, a Krohn from Finland. Uh, Jeroen Mull now the pole sitter from the Netherlands has got past Patrick Lindsay at that restart to assume second position as a pole sitter in GT Daytona. Now second ahead of Patrick Lindsay in the part-based Porsche. 
And then Scott uh, Pruitt, the veteran, in a Lexus in foot, hanging right there in fourth place. Uh, no Mazdas here this weekend. Adam has tweeted at Inter Radio to ask where they are. They've been withdrawn for the rest of the season. It's a change of organisation for the Mazda RTP24. And they will come back in 2018, run by Joost Racing. It's Mazda Joost Racing for 2018. Joost have got the cars. They're evaluating them. Uh, they are. We're expecting them to ask for a revision of the homologation of the uh, Multimatic Riley chassis on that car, possibly even some aero tweaks as well as Ralph Jutner and Reinhold Joost bring those cars back in 2018 to join, of course, a category that will also have the Penske Acura. It's a little bit of bump and go at Canada Corner. Mark Goosens and Misha Goikberg getting well acquainted there. Ligier and Origa, no change of position as this gaggle of prototype cars fights its way through the teens of the GTD category. And Madison Snow is in the midst of it at the moment. Side by side action as the Gutierrez cars lost second position there to Johannes van Overbeck and Scott Sharp has there gone through as well. And here comes Eric Curran. He's trying to have a go down into. Turn number five, so both the Patron cars have gone through. There was a touch there as well, and Goikberg might be able to swap to the inside going up the hill. Ooh, oh, my goodness. Lots of weaving around there and touching of bodywork, and these prototypes are built like the GT cars. You can't do that. You're going to lose pieces of very expensive and aerodynamically important carbon fibre as Goosens has forced off the track on the way down through. Hurry downs to turn number eight. Guys, use your mirrors if you're going to yeah. move around on the track. That's not good driving. Eric Kerr all of a sudden jinked to, to the left there when the Gutierrez was already there. That was a very odd manoeuvre going up the hill towards turn six there by Kerr. Uh, he's just got that position from Gutierrez, uh, who uh, he was having a hard time getting through some of the traffic there. I think Rick Taylor has now extended his lead the last two laps by two seconds a lap over Gutierrez. has now fallen back into that, that pack of prototype cars. So just uh, to bring you up to date, the new second and third place cars, the two Nismo powered Ligiers of uh, Tequila Patron ASM, Johannes van Overbeck and Scott Sharp have gone past. But they will be into the pit lane soon. We've had 36 minutes. Eric Curran now up into fourth position as Jose Gutierrez has gone from second to fifth in the blink of an eye. Ricky Taylor now with six and a half seconds late. What do we reckon? 35, 40 minutes for the prototypes, Jeremy? Is that what the teams have been telling you in terms of their fuel window? To how long? 35, 40 minutes? Yes. So we're right in that now. Yeah, we'll be we? fairly close. We had that very brief full course caution, but it won't be long now. Next uh, lap or two, I would suggest, before we see the leaders onto pit lane. Magnificent entertainment from the prototypes behind Ricky Taylor, who's 6.3 seconds ahead of the battle for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. The rest of the prototype field. Goitberg trying to get around the outside of Gutierrez, who seems to be struggling in this latter part of the stint in the PR1 Matheson Motorsport. It's Oli Pla who was the other driver there. He is super quick. And, and a mistake there also by Goosens allowed Filipaldi finally correct. to find a way past number five car at turn five exit. Mark Goosens just going a little bit too deep into five. So when will Oli Pla get into the car? Will it be at the first stop or will Gutierrez pull a double? No sign of Oli Pla on the wall according to our Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter, Shea Adam. IMSA radio and TV synchronised. We're together in sound and vision from trackside here at Road America. What a first 40 minutes it, this has been. Extraordinary racing. And Gutierrez and... Oh, he's cool. just pushed, pushed off the uh, yellow 85 car again there. So more dirt on the Continental Tires for Misha Goitberg. That's twice he's had to make avoiding action and that rear guard fight for Gutierrez has cost him three places there. Yeah. Now, are we going to get into learning. the pits this time around? He is. He is. Might have been better to yep. have just uh, given up the one place. Yeah, wandered across to the right there. Again, I don't think that's malicious, Jeremy, but he's got to show better 
all-round awareness of his situation than that. Uh, second and third in the pit lane. And it, the Ligier. And the, and the 52 Ligier of Gutierrez. Let's go to Shea Adam, who has action in this Continental Time Pit every Well, the three cars will hit their pit boxes first. They came into the pit lane ahead of the number 52, the white prototype in the pit lane right now. The number 22 Nissan will be getting sticker tires. The sister car, the two, will be getting scuffed rubber. In terms of the number 52, no driver change. They have done a Brinks bottle change for that car, and they are putting stickers onto the 52 as well. So brand new Continental tires for two of these three. Bunch of fuel going in. No driver changes for any of the cars up and down the pit lane. Not even a drinks bottle update for Scott Sharp or for Johannes Van Everbeck. They're both calm, cool, and collected. Two is off of its air jacks. Fuel still going in. The lights just came back on for the 52, but it's still up on its air jacks. 22 leaves ahead of its sister car. Now the two gets moving. And finally, the 52 as well. So that was a great stop by the ESM team. It they, seemed like a long time, didn't it? It but, did uh, seem like a very long time. I guess, I guess it wasn't because they all they came out pretty much in the same order they came in. And Don Yount has rejoined as well in the 20 car after the damage sustained early on to the number 20, a prototype challenge car. Uh, for my money, if anything, I thought the 52 had made up a little bit of ground there on the two ESM cars because he'd been shuffled all the way back to the back of the grid, it's still Jose Gutierrez. So they've dropped down into 13th, 14th and 15th position ahead of pretty much all, uh, sorry, behind pretty much all of the GTLM cars. So now let's see how far the Cadillacs can go. The Cadillac 6.2 engines, V8 of course. Uh, typically we've seen that the 31 and five cars haven't been able to go quite as far as the 10, which goes past me and down into turn one now. And in fact, Eric Curran's in the pit lane now. So the red wheel and engineering car, the 31 machine, is on the pit lane, and Shea Adam has this. Such an eerie sensation, John, when you say a car is on a pit lane and I can't see it. Now it comes up over the crest of the hill, and the Visit Florida pit board is waving as well, so I would expect to see a blue car. I also see a yellow one. The Orica is on the pit lane. Stephen Simpson up on the wall for that one. And for the number 31, I do not see Dane Cameron, so there will not be a driver change for the 31. For the 5, there is damage to the rear of the Mustang sampling Cadillac, though. The left rear is completely deranged. Driver change going on there. Christian Fittipaldi out and Joao Barbosa in. Tires and fuel for both of those cars as well. And the number 90, the Visit Florida Ligier, is getting no driver change, but they have put sticker Continentals on that car. Let's see who's going to beat each other out. The 31 should be the first one to leave because they were the first one to arrive. The engine refires on the 85, but it is the 31 who gets out ahead of everyone else. 90 is the next one to leave. 85 and 90 are going to have a drag race leaving the pit lane. The 5 beats both of them back out, so it was 31, 5, 90, 85. And we'll have the 10 car in this time around, according to their pit radio. They're setting up on the pit raw wall. So second place now for Dirk Muller in the GTLM leader, and he might just be able to nick the lead when the number two, oh, deranged rear bodywork on the number five Cadillac. They've had a little bit of a touch, I think, coming out of the pit lane. So it's that, rubbing that tire. It's rubbing. I'm surprised tire. they didn't. If that was like that when it came, shit, Adam, you saw that car. Left-hand side rear was is sticking up now quite a lot. Was that like that in the pit lane? It was pushed up in completely the wrong dimension. I'm shocked that they didn't attend to it. But John, also between the five and the 31, their pit boxes are quite close together. You have 30 feet of space to work with. They stopped very close together though, so they did not take advantage of all that space. Uh, the big 10. time. The number 10 comes into the pit lane. Shit, Adam, with this Continental Tire pit lane report. Ricky Taylor is on the pit lane speed limiter. The last pit box is what's allotted to the championship leader of the prototype class. Ricky looks so calm as he just trundles down and pulls over into the pit box. I don't see Jordan Taylor's orange helmet up on the pit wall. Indeed, Ricky staying behind the wheel. Four sticker Continentals going on for that car. A whole lot of fuel. I'll let you know if anything happens, John. Uh, in the meantime, Shea, we had a pit stop for the first of the GT Le Mans runners, and that was the 24 BMW. It's back out now with John Edwards behind the wheel, and Dirk Muller will be scored as the leader if he stays out next time around, Jeremy. Um, yeah, not sure where he, where he came out, whether Taylor came out. Not sure whether he will or not. 
Well, we'll have to wait here, and see on that one. Here but, comes uh, Taylor now, we'll out see, of the pit stop. I mean, big advantage in number 10 car. Not only did, were they running out front at a great pace, although I haven't said that number 31 car. Yeah, uh, big advantage because they were able to go a one lap longer as well. So great for fuel consumption as well as great speed for Ricky Taylor. Yeah, you're right. Ricky Taylor got out without giving up the lead, Jeremy. And Eric Curran has got by Dirk Muller. And that means the 31 car will hold on to second position. What a turnaround this has been. So there were longer stops by the Nismo cars. That's amazing, isn't it? That they managed to, uh, the Cadillacs managed to get so much of an advantage. Uh, Scott, Scott Sharp has lost some 12 seconds to Eric Curran. They came in ahead. Meantime, back in is the number five Cadillac. This must be the bodywork issue, Shane. That's exactly what it is, John. They are taking the rear of the car off. It's actually the wing assembly itself is its own piece, but it has pushed up the engine cover. They weren't expecting to have to change the engine cover as well. They have a new rear assembly ready to go on the car. They might need a new engine cover, though. I would put one on there, honestly. They've got a new Continental tire to go on the left-hand side. So if they're going to be that careful, they might as well change both. Meanwhile, that's the sound of Lawrence Vantor going out for his first racing laps around Road America. Jimmy Bruni's job is done for now. 912 took fuel and tires only. They are putting the same engine cover back onto the number five. And the bodywork that came off, part of the issue might have been John, and this is just me speculating, but they might not have known about the damage when he did come in. That could have been something that happened on the end lap. And he spun the wheels. The wheels were turning before he came down. And I think that's going to be a penalty there. There's paint work on the side of that car, and there was an incident on the way through the pits for the five and the number 90, the Visit Florida car of Mark Goosens. So I expect to hear that that is being looked at. Almost dropped a full lap there, Jeremy. The Cadillac back out there, the number five car. Cadillac 1-2. Johannes van Overbeck now has closed in to something in the region of five seconds away from the leader. That's three seconds away from second place. So those slightly longer stops for the Nissans. Now, before you start pointing fingers at the ESM team, part of the balance of performance here in IMSA racing is how long it takes to fill your fuel tank. We talk quite a lot. You'll have heard us talk in the past about restrictors on engine. Just uh, deciding how much power the engine can make by how much air goes in. Basically, it's like putting a, a, a small straw in the nostrils of Usain Bolt and asking him to run 100 metres. You choke down how much oxygen can go into the engine and therefore how much power can be made. Well, the same way there are restrictors put into the fuel rigs which govern how quickly the fuel of choice can flow into the petrol tanks of the prototype, in fact, right across the field. So that is part of the balance of performance. So ESM not necessarily having done anything wrong there. That could just be the fuel floor rate as mandated by IMSA. We've still got the top four cars, though, separated by just on 10 seconds, as Eric Curran's just done his fastest lap of the race at 56.5, and he's going to improve that this time around, provided he doesn't hit too much traffic in the final third of the track. Stephen Simpson and Mark Goosens are back at it. Or should I say at it, because Stephen Simpson has taken over the 85 bright yellow JDC Miller Motorsports Orica from his teammate, Misha Goikberg, who's come up through the IMSA ladder system, prototype challenge racer for a wee while and done a really good job. Stephen Simpson, South African, very proud South African. Oh, as Goosens dives into the pits very late indeed in the Visit Florida well, car. That's scheduled, then. And that is not scheduled. I'm guessing that that must be a penalty for the contact with the five car, Shea Adam. Yeah, he's not going to be stopping in his pit box, John. Uh, the Visit Florida team are all still sitting on the pit wall. The pit board is not out, so that will be a drive through penalty for the 90. That was contact with the five car uh, in the pit lane, I believe, or at least in the environs thereof. And Mark Goosens then takes the first penalty of the Ligier chassis era for VFR. Mm, that's disappointing for that team because uh, they've been having a good run going there, certainly. Now, um, Eric Curran, a 56 0 last time, took, took well, time out of the leader. That, yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, they're the big gainers in that round of pit stops. They made up a lot of ground. They made up uh, 
uh, three positions on that round of pit stops, came in in uh, fourth position, well, third, I guess, because they got past the 52 car, but now up into second place, and well clear of the uh, Nissans that are running uh, quite a bit farther behind them now. Yeah, we are heading up towards an hour and 50 minutes to go, so we're getting close to that 45 uh, minute time. Uh, Cooper McNeil out of the 50 car, so in fact, yes, he's done his minimum time. Uh, welcome to the IMSA Radio and TV studio, to Travis Roffler uh, from Continental Tire. Good to have him here. And Travis, this is uh, your name above the door here for the Continental Tire Road Race Showcase. And what a showcase it's been, particularly at the head of the field. You must be loving this. It's exciting. It's, uh, this is going to be one heck of a race. And the fact that we've managed to avoid the rain that we had yesterday, it's been fantastic racing so far. Uh, as Director of Marketing for Continental Tire, uh, why are you guys in motor racing? Well, you know, everybody talks about the uh, what we take to the track and how it gets to the street, and we really develop tires out here, not in the sense of this is the tire that you'll ever run on your street car, but from a technology standpoint, from construction, casing, compound, what we learn out here on the track as far as wear is concerned, and the endurance that a tire has to go through to survive under these conditions out in the track, you know, taking those technologies and what we learn and take it to the street is where the development is engaged on the street side. And is that why endurance racing is a more relevant form of competition than, say, a 15 or 20 minute sprint or changing tires in maybe a formula race or something like that? Yeah, I mean, you could equate the, what we see, the abuse in a tire on a, on a track like this that goes for a stint of 30 to 40 minutes or so is equivalent to putting you know, 20 to 30,000 miles on a tire in the abuse that we see and the, the damage that's done to the casing and such, equivalent to what you see in a street over a long period of time. So now your, your Extreme Contact Sport, which has been on sale here in the US since end of February, beginning of March, that is a tire that has direct input from five active drivers who are racing this weekend in the IMSA Championship. Nobody's done that before. I, I, I'd love to have been in the meeting when you pitched that. We're going to let racing drivers decide what our next street tire is going to feel like. Yeah, I mean, you, we brought those drivers out there and uh, they were given, I think we started off with six to eight sets of different constructions, compounds, uh, and they were able to give us direct feedback to, the, to our engineer in the seat and provide that feedback to him directly and based upon their feedback and what they gave us, we were able to hone in on the construction and compound that ultimately became the new Extreme Contact Sport. And did that work for you, really? Well, if feedback and on the blogs and everything out there are true, the Extreme Contact Sport is a marked step better than the Extreme Contact DW, its predecessor. So, yes, I think we've raised the bar. Uh, dramatically, Are we going to stop there? Absolutely not. We continue to develop and continue to push forward, not only what we do out here on the track, but also for what we're doing in the street for our customers out there. What surprised me about that whole, uh, that, that whole project that you put together was that your tyre engineers didn't feel threatened by having the race drivers. In fact, they, they embraced them with open arms. And I'm hearing the feedback I'm hearing from, from your side of things and your engineers who I, I met over at Thermal when the, some of that t final testing was doing is they'd like to have the race car drivers back and do that again and, and repeat that for the for the next generation of tires that will come along in about 18 months' time. Yeah, I mean, it's not, and it's not just in ultimate uh, UHP tires either. I mean, those... Ultra high performance. Ultra yeah. high performance tires. So, you know, when we get into our passenger car stuff or luxury performance touring, you know, you see those kind of developments across the board in a lot of different tire developments. So, you know, the, the skill and knowledge that those drivers brought to us in our UHP tire is across the board in all tire categories might, as well. You might want to ask Kenny Abul uh, to try out some of your off-road tires because he's just <laughs> taken the 75 AMG GT for a bit of a wild ride on the far side uh, of the circuit. Pit stops for GTLM at the moment. Let's go down to share Adam. Well, it's been fast and furious down here, John. We've had the number 67 come into the pit lane. That was Ryan Briscoe who brought it in. Richard Westbrook who takes it back 
back outfield and tires for the Ford. The number 911, the other Porsche, the one with all the signatures on the hood, came in. Dirk Werner is now behind the wheel. Patrick Pele got out. The Ford Corvette is a little bit further up the pit lane. They are doing fuel and tires for that one as well. Split the strategy this weekend between the three and the four. Oliver Gavin's time is now done, and it's Tommy Milner's turn to try and bring it home again. Last year, remember, they were fifth when we went from that final restart. The number 96 BMW is in the pit lane. Of course, the Corvette won that race. I forgot to mention that part. Uh, that is a driver change as well. GTD leader Jesse Krohn's job is done, and now it's up to Jens Klingmann. The 57 Stevenson Audi pulls into it. Box wheel and tires will be going on to that car. Andrew Davis gets out. Lawson Oshbach, one of the Continental Tire Development drivers that you were just talking about, he's getting his turn to drive. 63 Ferrari, the championship leader in GTD, comes in, and Alessandro Balzan is up on the wall. He's ready to go. Christina Nielsen will be getting out, fuel and tires, as well as for the number 33, the Mercedes chasing the Ferrari in the championship. Ben Keating extracts himself very quickly. Almost looked like he hurt his ankle when he got out of the car on that one, John. Uh, but it's Jerome Blakemuller getting into that car. The 96 is the first one back out of the pit lane, so the GTD leader does not lose the lead on that pit stop sequence. And uh, we also have 57, great exit by the Audi on the pit lane. It gets out ahead of the 16, the change racing Lamborghini. Uh, the number 25 BMW comes in for its stop. Bill Oberlin is up on the wall. 63 and 33 are both still stationary in their pit box. 33 starts move. 63 easily beats out the 33. Alexander Sims already out of the 25. Michelin's going on to that car during this pit stop and a lot of fuel. And the 66, the 4 GT, is also on the pit lane. That will be Joey Hand getting behind the wheel of that car, which I will confirm right now, yep, that is Joey's uh, helmet behind the windshield of that car. 25 comes off of its hijacks, and the BMW is just waiting on fuel. 107 liters, that's a heck of a lot of fuel to go into that engine. Now we are good. So all of our GTLN contenders have now stopped at this point. And uh, I only have one car left on the pit lane, and that is the core Autosport Porsche, but that's a little bit easier for you to see. Yeah, and uh, John Brennan's brought that car in. Uh, he has got out of the car and is uh, walking away, quite a, a distance away from the car before he flops over the wall. So driver change there, that car is down. It's on the uphill part of the pit lane, so there has to be one of the crew members holding on to it. It's taking a wee bit longer to bolt the new driver in. The door will now be closed. They haven't lost any time because the fuel is still going in. Fuel hose is off. It's fired, the rear continental tyre scrabbling for grip as it pulls back out, and the 54 car is down and away after full service. Travis Roffler, Director of Marketing of Continental Tire with us. Just a, a final thought before we let you go and uh, enjoy the rest of this race with an hour and 44 minutes to go. You're involved not just in here in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, obviously the Continental Tire uh, Championship as well. You have the Prototype Challenge. Oh, hang on a second, somebody's just shed a bit of bodywork. Or was that an issue on the right rear? It is a right rear problem for Kenny Apple's 75 car. Now, did Kenny bring that car in and change over after he'd been off? He did. It's Tristan Fortier, and he's got problems. It's a suspension problem, and the tyre is catching on the back of the bodywork there, and that has uh, done damage to the tyre. So that 75 car is touring back in down on the right rear. What a shame, they were having a decent run there before Tristan had, before Kenny rather, had problems and came into the pit lane. Uh, just a final thought from, from you, Travis. You're involved in all these different championships, uh, LMP3, uh, GTD cars. I mean, that's a hugely different set of, of parameters for, the, uh, for your tyre engineers to work with and, and your tyre designers to work with. Does that help in terms of the, that huge amount of data that you must be that you must be gathering here. Yeah, all the different classes. We work obviously with all the teams across the board with developing tires on the P classes, DPI and uh, the P2 chassis as well that come from us uh, out of Europe as well. And then the GTD platforms, which is a version of the GT3 platform globally. So working with all those makes and models and you know, really developing tires that make sense for them. But here in the IMSA series, developing one tire that works for everybody, and that's a challenge. Yeah, very, mu very much so. You got a lot of different makes, models, a lot of different aero, a lot of different body styles that uh, all have to make one tire work. So we work very hard on that 
we, throughout we talk, the year. We talk about Continental Tires a lot because that's what we see here on the track. But Continental is a global company, um, originally from Europe, Germany. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, control systems that, that you guys are involved with, in, including automated cars and such like that. Uh, any any uh, thoughts about taking the tyre side of your competitive, uh, your competition department outside of the US and, and competing in Europe or globally? Uh, we're definitely uh, looking at that. I mean, Continental is a large global automotive supplier. So to all these OEMs here present today, we work with them in a myriad of different areas within control systems, within the cars, like the car that parallel parks itself, OnStar from General Motors, all those kind of componentries. We work with electronics uh, across the board, electronic stability control systems and uh, the anti-lock braking systems. We're a big supplier in braking and suspension components to all OE manufacturers across the globe. So we are a very global player and motorsports is a part of that. Uh, and congratulations on a very successful MLS All-Star game, which you guys were integrally uh, involved with down at Soldier Field on Wednesday night. Real Madrid winning on uh, penalty kicks over the MLS All-Stars. That's just a, another string the ball, which I'm sure we'll talk about another time, but fantastic uh, uh, uptake on soccer all of a sudden in the last three or four years here in the US. Yeah, we love our stick and ball stuff, but uh, we're here for motorsports, so we enjoy the loud noise of horsepower and burning up lots of rubber tires. So. We appreciate you guys and everything you guys do, uh, bringing this uh, out to race fans globally. We appreciate everything you, John, Jeremy, do for uh, sports car fans uh, around the world. So thank you from Continental Tire for everything you guys do. Uh, and the back at you from the, uh, from the fans, Travis Ruffler, uh, our uh, Continental Tire uh, Director of Marketing here for uh, us this uh, weekend, joining us uh, down in the pit lane. Our Continental Tire pit lane reporter is Shea Adam, and the 75 has been in back, Shea. Yeah, he's made it back, but he's going to be here for a while, John. This is going to be a lengthy stop to try and fix the suspension. They've gotten two new arms out of the truck to try and fix the car, but they're still trying to do it on the pit lane. They still think that they can repair the suspension within about the next five minutes and get them back out. They're not in this championship for points anymore. They were at the beginning of the year, especially bolstered by that third place finish at Circuit of the Americas and at Sebring for uh, Tristan Bodier. He was the driver in the car for both of those, but right now it's all about getting miles under the belts of the car. They had a test session. They were going to do at VIR that got cancelled because of the damage at the last race at Live Rock. So right now, going back out, if they can get this car fixed, it will serve as their test session for the VIR race. Uh, Jacinda has just tweeted us here at IMSA Radio and uh, any chance of the Continental Tires coming to the Nürburgring 24? I've just showed that to Travis Ruffler as he walked out. There was a big smile on his face as he left. Uh, I, I don't know what to read into that, Jet, to be honest, but thanks for asking that. At IMSA Radio, uh, the uh, development continues for Continental Tire here in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and the Conti Series, and it's bringing us great racing at the front of the field at the moment. Yes, we've got Ricky Taylor out by nearly seven seconds, but Eric Curran, Johannes van Overbeck, Scott Sharp, Stephen Simpson are together almost as one as they go past us now. And Eric Curran's under pressure from Van Overbeck. He's going to drive us right. That means the long way around, round turn number one, which is a right hander. No, he can't make it stick. And here comes Scott Sharp. Can he square off the corner? Can't do it. It's going to be one, two, three wide for a moment. Scott Sharp weaving back and forth behind his teammate, trying to put some pressure on that bright red number 31 Cadillac. And in behind them, Stephen Simpson is enjoying the view. Well, yes, and he's closed right in there, Stephen Simpson, in that bright yellow number 85 car for that team based, of course, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So this is their home track. And uh, Stephen Simpson has just set the fastest lap of the race last time around. A uh, 1 minute 55.470. That's fractionally outside the track record. Stephen Simpson is flying. Ian McCarthy. He might not be doing very well in the cricket, but he's flying in the racetrack. <laughs> Yeah, we'll not mention that to him till he gets out. <laughs> I have a suspicion that he'll be, be watching just as closely hey, we've got, uh, as we could as we are. Okay, with the sun's up, like oh, absolutely, we? absolutely right. And the Ian McCarthy has just tweeted: any reason that the Corvette still have all the Le Mans names on the roof? Is it for luck? Because it hasn't brought them too much at the moment. It's a fair point. Tony Garcia. And it's Tommy Milner in seventh and eighth position. Shea Adam has the answer to that question that came in via IMSA, uh, at IMSA Radio. They always have three names on the roofs. From the Daytona race onwards, it always lists who they have in their cars. So that's uh, nothing special from this year. That's been happening for the last few years. 
Thank you, Shay. Don't forget as well, our Michelin post-race tech show. The chequered flag might be the end of the race, but it's only the start of the conversation. Anything that you've seen that you want to bring up, either in this race or across the weekend, or uh, points arising, questions you want to ask, uh, then you could start tweeting them in in round about 20 minutes' time, with about an hour to go at IMSA Radio, and uh, use the hashtag Michelin PRT, please, at IMSA Radio. Michelin PRT is the hashtag at IMSA Radio. And for our Spirit of the Race Award, tell you more about that later on, but those of you that know, know what I'm talking about, that will be R-A-P-R-T, R-A-P-R-T. And again, to uh, at IMSA Radio. Ricky Taylor's pace was just a little bit down, Jeremy, off the pit stops. So I wonder if they just made a slight adjustment in the tyre pressures and they were just coming up to, to pressure there, but he's down in the 57s again now and has uh, stabilised that lead at round about seven and a half seconds. No real need for him to push any harder at the moment because no one is getting anywhere near his times. Correct. Uh, the uh, two Nissans did change pace, by the way. Scott Sharp did manage to get past uh, Jans van Overbeek. Uh, they're leaving Gutierrez uh, well behind him in the 52 car, back into sixth position now in GTLM as we watch uh, Dirk Mueller, uh, Joey Handis, excuse me, uh, pull through turn five, turn six. He's got a couple of second lead over John Edwards in the number 24 BMW. So uh, that's a car that has uh, come up extraordinarily well from the back of the field. Uh, second place we heard from John Edwards, was it this morning? Saying yes. that uh, he, he, he didn't feel too bad at all about starting from the back. Well, it's been a brilliant charge by uh, by he and Martin Tomczyk. Uh, meanwhile, back in GTD, don't it's still BM, it's all BMW. 13 second lead over now. Jeff Siegel in the number 86 Acura that made a huge jump uh, during the pit stops, vaulted from one, two, three, four, fifth place into second, and is uh, is not not picking up any ground on the leader certainly, but holding off your Bergmeister number. 73, number 15, Hawksworth, 57, Audi of Lawson Aschenbach, and then Corey Lewis in the uh, change race in Lamborghini, bow, now back to sixth place. That's a pole sitter. Yeah, I'm not surprised that Jeff Segal isn't making any ground on Jens Klingman at the moment because uh, Bergmeister and Hawksworth are uh, not even a second. The pair of them aren't a second behind him. It's half a second and another three tenths. So he's got his mirrors full of people weaving around trying to find the bit of track that they want. Uh, meantime, in the GT Le Mans battle, Joey Hand leads John Edwards by two seconds. Lauren Van Turner, another second or so behind at the front of the field, having got past his teammate, Scott Sharp has dragged right up behind Eric Curran again and is looking at the back of the Cadillac DPIV. Down through turn seven. Janis van Overbeck's time's just dropped off a tiny bit. Scott Sharp's just done his fastest lap of the race. And for the car, there will be a penalty on the 75 car coming up. Uh, that is the AMG GT. Too many men over the wall working on the car after that issue on the serving, right rear. Serving that right now. Thank you, Jeremy. Always helps to actually look to see what is happening in front of us. Can't fail to be anything other than impressed by Ricky Taylor's drive here, Jeremy. Um, 5.4 seconds to the good on the next best Cadillac. Well, Eric Curran there has put his best lap in. Oh, that was a slow lap from Taylor there. Must have caught a bit of traffic at 58-1 against no, well, the 55-6. It was just, no, just a really good lap from Eric Curran uh, okay. more than anything else. Well, he's under pressure, isn't he, from Scott Sharp. So Eric's been given the hurry up from his team, as I'm sure Scott Sharp is from back on the pit wall. No Ed Brown in terms of driving duties, but still very much involved with the team. Tequila Patron still writ large, and no thought of that disappearing there. Commitment to the IMSA Championship, the North American Endurance Championship title sponsor, of course, Tequila Patron. And hearing that Ed Brown will be testing a Ferrari, an Audi, and a Mercedes-Benz. GT3 car shortly. Can't possibly think why that might be, Jeremy, for Ed. Well, I just... Just because, uh, I mean, maybe he's got an afternoon yeah, free. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's a pretty busy, busy guy, so... Well, he is. If you manage, if you manage to uh, get wangle a day off, hey, take advantage of it, right? Ed, pleased to hear that your back surgery went well, and we'd love to see you back in the paddock in a, a GTD car. 
anytime soon. Been a, a great supporter of this form of racing for several years here in North America. The green and black tequila patron colours being on a variety of uh, sports cars, including Ferraris, of course. Let's not forget mm. that uh, they were that a GT. Ago, was it? No, that's right. They were a GT team. GT team not so very long ago. And Ed's uh, background was in Ferrari racing as well, in club racing. 2012, I think, the last time that they won. In fact, I don't think that. I know that because Shay's just told me that. Uh, 85 car, Stephen Simpson. Now, has he just had a problem? Oh. That car, all of a sudden, seemed to be going slowly. Jose Gutierrez looked a little closer than 12 seconds. Yes, he's slow in the centre section. Lost about seven seconds. So I think the 85 car might have been off on the exit of the carousel. And, oh, yeah, he got pushed out there hmm. by... By the Nissan. By the Nissan. Of were, Johannes van Overbeck. Both trying to find a way past at number 54, Court Order Sport. Porsche now has Colin Brown at the wheel, but boy, that was a long way off the road. Thankfully, there is a long way off the road yes. there these days. It yeah, used to be. Fortunately, he had his hand stamped as he went out there, yeah. so he could get back in, waving around as he goes past us on the start finish bit to try and clean the Wisconsin dirt off his tyres. It was a, a nasty moment there. Coming up behind slower cars, and that's what we're seeing in the keys of the race, Jeremy, managing the traffic. It's all about just picking and choosing the time to be able to get through. He was battling for a position. Uh, fourth overall with Johannes van Overbeck, but that's dropped him back. Hasn't lost him a, a place, but it's cost him six seconds in that battle, and that's going to take him a wee while to get back. In GT Daytona, let's pick up what's going on there. Jens Klingman by 14 seconds now. That lead uh, handed to him pretty much by his teammate, Jesse Cronin, did a great job early on. It, Jens is doing a do good job as well, in fairness. Jeff Siegel, the man on the move in terms of what's been happening at and since the pit stop, the 86 Acura, with a great pit stop cycle from Michael Shank Racing, and that's pushed that car into second. 25 BMW yes. into the pit lane. Bill Obler. Now, they were the last of the GTLM yes. cars to come in. They last came in on 26, so this is not a scheduled stop. Just, uh, what, uh, seven laps ago. Shea Adam, what's going on down there? A single new Michelin, John. Uh, the left rear they are changing. They have pulled the right front off as well. They are examining something on that portion of the car. Now the hood is coming off. Remember, this car had a little bit of frontal contact into a barrier earlier on. Now they've changed the right rear as well. This is going to be a while. Just hearing from race control that the number 14 Lexus, currently in the hands of Sage Karam, has been given a warning for blocking. Well, the BMWs was right up behind it there. It's not the same class car. Sage sort of just wandering around in one of the faster parts of the circuit. He knows better than that. And just a, a gentle reminder of his responsibilities when being passed. There's that key to the race again, Jeremy. Managing traffic, being passed is a skill just as much as passing is. Very much so, it certainly is. And a new lap record there for Stephen Simpson in car number 85 wow. after being nerfed off the road there down at the carousel. Number 25 car still stationary there, by the way. It doesn't look very urgent. Uh, but a great lap there by Stephen Simpson to put 154.360. And there is a new prototype lap record around here for the Inter Weather Tech Sports Car Championship. Eclipses the uh, 55.4 set last year by Tristan Nunez in the Mazda. So he's uh, whittling away that deficit again. He's going to try and get back on turn through the hands of an overback. Yeah, the whole front end of the Obel and BMW, the 25 car is off. It looks like they're looking at the upright. Shea Adam is down there. They've got the, uh, they've got the socket set out there, Shea. This is not a work of a moment. No, and it's really unfortunate because this is the car that came into the race this weekend, second in the championship standings for GTLM. Two wins this year for Bill Oberlin and for Alexander Sims, who seems to love driving all these new tracks. He just seems to gel really well with them. Almost split the forwards in qualifying yesterday, but uh, the hood is going back on. I have to wait to see if they're going to send the car back out. They're saying wait before they take it off the air jacks. The engine was just refired. Ah, there was a block under the car. 
good heads up. Now the 25 is going back out and it is going out on track. We are expecting any moment now, John, the number two to come in because it's razzle dazzle time. And here we take over from Scott Sharp. Hello to MPG, just tweeted at IMSA Radio driving. Uh, to uh, back from Missouri and uh, through South Carolina at the moment. Not sure whether uh, you are heading to MPG, listening in to us at the moment, enjoying this coverage live from Trackside, IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Uh, together, of course, for the international audience, the pictures are stunning. Well done to the truck today. And uh, I know it's all digital nowadays, but particularly to the tape apes, that, that is uh, still the terminology that's used for the replay team, who are doing a cracking job. It's uh, getting us up to date with what's been going on in the parts of the circuit that we can't see. If you are a quick Nectar X7 Sirius are taking this race flag to flag with no interruption, XM201 Sirius 145, the two channel numbers that you need to know. As we are just under 90 minutes to go, one hour and 26 minutes. Slow accurate puncture left rear puncture on the start finish straight so he w wasn't able that to was get that car to it? yes it is second place in gt daytona oh, that's happened just after the entrance to the pitch then jeremy yeah. and he's got four miles to go around what a nightmare for the lead acura it's been a horrible weekend for michael shank racing hasn't it and that tire has gone down it's staying on the rim for the moment jeff siegel driving maybe a little bit quickly but He's desperate to get back around. For Stuart Hall telling me at the uh, 24 hours of Silverstone this year, when I said, how fast do you drive on a punctured tire? He said, whatever you're doing, it's too fast. All was slow down. Now, where did this happen? Just come oh, out of the final corner, Jeremy. Uh, and unfortunately, he was kind of pinned there by number 73 car was going past York him. Bergmeister got yeah. the run on him out the final corner. Yeah. And therefore, Jeff Siegel couldn't make the cut back into pit lane. Well, oh. you know what? That is very, very gentlemanly driver driving from Siegel. He could have tried to ease his way across into the pit lane, well. but that would have caused uh, all kinds of issues for the cars behind him. Uh, that, you know, the, the only other thing he could have done really was stopped. jam on the brakes yeah, and, uh, and then wait for the cars to go past and then pull across the road or even pull off the grass on the outside. But this is so, so, so costly for that number 86 car. It's been a brilliant run for he and Oz Negri. I love that red, uh, that Valencia red uh, pearl with the, uh, the black detailing on that. That is a color that you can get on your street. NSX, not that I'm likely to have a street NX, NSX any time soon. Struggle to put the, uh, put the deposit down on a, on a Civic, to be honest. <laughs> the, the guys, especially with uh, what the responsible adult pays me. I don't know. <laughs> um, I only get played to fly, I do the motor racing stuff for nothing. That's <laughs> what I get told. In fairness, I'm not arguing with that. Uh, the two Porsches are heading back towards us. Lauren Banter and Dirk Werner behind the wheel, and they're dealing with GT Daytona traffic. And they're having to work so very hard to drag past a uh, Lamborghini, that's the change racing car, uh, and the 63 Scuderia Corsa machine, Alessandro Balzan, by the way, has quietly, without any fuss, worked his way back into the top six for that car. That's the championship leading car, and that's what they've been doing all season. Uh, ahead of him, Corey Lewis in the Lamborghini. That was the pole sitting car with Jerome Mull, who got rather mooked off the start line and dropped down, and they've not been able to regain those positions, Jeremy. Just don't seem to have had the pace over the long run that they had in putting that pole lap together. Well, they're doing fine until the first round of pit stops. Uh, they're running in the uh, uh, second position, but, um, yeah, lost a bit of ground during that pit stop, and then... I don't think, not, not that Corey Lewis is losing much ground, but he's certainly losing the odd tenth of a second here to that uh, other group of cars. Uh, Scott Sharp is in the pit lane, Jose Gutierrez, the two Nissan, the 52 Ligier, and also uh, in the pit lane is the Acura, who's coming through the false grid area, but we'll pull back on the pit lane. Let's have the prototype stops with this Continental Tire pit lane update. Scott Sharp, after a brilliant job, he's won here twice before. He gets out of the number two machine, and it's razzle-dazzle time. He is installing himself in. They're giving him four scuffed Continental Tires on that number two machine. For the number
number 52. It is now time for Olivier Pla to do his first racing lap around here since 2014. It was a DNF that year, so anything would be an improvement for the Frenchman. He is getting four new Continental tires. Jeff Siegel has brought that number 86 machine back in. The tire is flailing around haphazardly, but it hasn't done a terrible amount of bodywork damage to that number 86, especially given what the crew saw yesterday from the sister car. This is a lot better than what they've dealt with. They are changing the front tires before they get to work on the rear. And the three Corvette has also been in it. Antonio Garcia stayed behind the wheel of that car. They did fuel and tires for him, hoping that this alternate strategy pays off because there is rain in the area. We're not sure when it will make its way in, but uh, for the 86 Acura team, they're making sure that none of the suspension bits are broken. No, the, uh, the wheel hub is not moving around on its own. Jeff did a great job to get that back in. Oh, and uh, Pippo Durrani is up on the wall for the 22 now, so expect Johannes Van Over back in next time by. And that will be from fourth position for the 22 car. Shit, do you want rain or do you not want rain? Uh, this is the question. Do you want rain or do you not want rain? Me? Yeah. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll take a little bit of rain. I don't have to wear my fire suit tomorrow, so I don't mind if, it, if I get a little bit uh, damp out here. All right, in, in which case, there's an hour and 21 minutes left, and I am about to say that there will not be any rain before the end of the race, and my predictions are rubbish. Thank you for that. No. <laughs> now I'm expecting to have to put up an umbrella soon. Uh, in comes the 85 and the 22. Johannes van Overbeck and Steven Simpson are in, and the 10 car of Ricky Taylor will be in next time round, Shane. Yeah? Okay, so this will not be a driver change for the 85. The Orica will still be handled by Steven. And Simpson, they pop open the door though and give him a new drinks bottle, not one that actually stays in the car, but one that he can have access to while his helmeting. Uh, they look like they're going to close the door. Yeah, they did. So he just took a sip of the drinks bottle. Must mean that they don't actually have one in the car for him to access whenever he wants. Four sticker Continental tires for the number 85, the JDC Miller Motorsport car. That's the 86 going back out. Excellent work again by the MSR crew to get the car fixed and ready to go. 22 is just waiting on the driver change of fuel. The leader has entered the pit lane, but he's a little bit further back. Uh, 22 is done with their fueling, done with everything, so Pippo Durrani gets to start his first race around Road America. That's pretty cool. Uh, leader will be coming in, Chase. Sorry, that was uh, my fault, uh, but it will be a driver change for the number 10. It will be Jordan Taylor getting in the car with about a minute, about an hour and uh, 20 minutes to go. Hello to Marshall Pro from Racer.com, tuned in to IMSA Radio and IMSA TV, live from Road America this weekend as the leader is in the pit lane. He points out great sportsmanship by the 86. Acura didn't cut across the track, but he got the puncture, and then he drove up the pit lane access road so he didn't slow any cars trying to make a fast charge up the hill at the pits. Completely agree. Jeff Siegel, class act. Uh, here's the leader, Shea Adam has this Continental Tire pit lane report as Ricky Taylor will be jumping out. And Jordan Taylor loves many things in life. He loves his dog, but he loves when he gets sticker Continental Tires. And that's exactly what will be happening for the number 10 machine. The Connick Minoltic team have another set of brand new tires to go on that car as he is followed in by the number 31. Eric Curran still behind the wheel of that machine, but his time is done as well because Dane Cameron is up on the wall with his distinctive green helmet. The driver change nearly complete for the 10 as Jordan Taylor just sort of disappears in through the window area of the door. Dane Cameron with a little bit more difficulty. He had a seat insert to put into the number 31 before. Now he has completed all of that. They're doing a tire change for the 31, a windshield tear off. The 10 is off of the jacks, fuel still going on. The 31 now comes off the air jacks as the 10 does a burnout and goes out on the circuit. Still waiting on fuel for that number 31. There it goes. And the number five should be in soon too as uh, the 90 has come in. That is Mark Goosen's done with his stint in the Visit Florida Ligier. Got to make sure that I say that. Rager Van de Zanda kind of casually jumps off the pit wall, holding out his seat insert. He will be taking his first laps around Road America in this car in racing condition. They are doing four Continental tires. I believe those are stickers. Uh, yep, there's a sticker on the right front as the uh, guy on the wall just kind of casually rolls it over to the tire changer. The tire changer is done, waiting on fuel only. Ranger is, uh, oh man, he is so pumped up. He's ready to go. You don't often see Ranger Van de Zand with a smile that big on his face. They pull the Florida shake pit board up, and out goes Ranger. Yeah, 
Adam with that Continental Tire pit lane report and the blue car is rolling again with Ringo van der Zander at the wheel. He gets up to pace, pulls out uh, onto the circuit, straight onto the racing line. There's no hard line out of the pits there. Uh, a lot of people will stay to the right. There's a dotted line, which means exactly as it would on the road. It's give way, yield, if you will. But there's not a hard line coming out the pitch that you've got to steer to the right-hand side of. So if the track is clear, you can get back on the racing line for turn one and get up to a uh, pace uh, a qu uh, as quickly as possible. So, Dave Cameron versus Jordan Taylor at the front of the field. Mm. Oh, that's worth the price of a mission right there. Yeah, certainly is. Dave Cameron and Eric Curran, winners of this race each of the last two years. And the year before that, Dane Cameron won here in GTD class as well, so he's uh, he absolutely loves this place. I remember him having a pole here in the um, Grand Am days as well. I think, I'm pretty sure it's his first pole in the prototypes. A long time ago now, that seems. But uh, that track in which he absolutely shines. But he's got quite a de deficit to uh, Jordan Taylor. He's already gone past us now to complete lap 40. There now goes Dane Cameron. Not too far ahead of number two, Nissan. 8.8 .8 seconds, the margin between first and second. People, Durrani gets down to work quickly, having taken over the 22 car, fastest centre section of anybody at a 155.1. Last time around, he's second only to Stephen Simpson's 54.3. He is quickly getting up to it, and a problem for the Allegra Motorsports Porsche. That is, is that another left rear puncture? It's sitting low down on yeah. that side. Jeremy, and it, it comes into the pit lane. This is Daniel Morad. Oh, yes. And that might be more than a puncture. I wonder if he's got some suspension damage there as well. And, oh, yeah, it's had a, an issue somewhere around the circuit, and then we've lost the uh, part of the tyre carcass altogether, and Daniel's had to try and get that car back for a better part of... A third of a lap he's got into the pit lane now, but that Allegra car will be losing track position as it comes to a halt now. It will be a four-tyre stop, I believe. Yep, four new sticker Continentals going up on the wall. So two young charges at the head of the field, Jeremy, in Jordan Taylor and Dan Cameron. And Dan will feel he's got something to prove here. The Taylor brothers have been taking all of the plaudits and all of the... Uh, all of the headlines this year, and Dan will want to uh, strike back for the 31 team and for himself. That's uh, potentially very important uh, piece of action on the front straight now, as the leader, Jordan Taylor, is coming up to put a lap on the number five Cadillac of Joao Barbosa, and Joao will not want that to happen. Indeed, he will Second not. in the championship, that number five team. I can imagine Joao is going to fight a bit of a rear guard action. He's just uh, completed his outlap. Yeah, and uh, particularly with the number 31 car, teammate, of course, number five, from the completely different colours and different sponsors, Mustang Sarpin, number five car, wheel and engineering on the number 31, but uh, number five team, I'm sure, would, would uh, in some ways want to help the number 31. Uh, the gap from first to second came down a little bit on that last lap, and both Ryan DL and Stephen Simpson were closing in a little bit as well. Simpson's got some ground to make up, but uh, he's got a super fast car in at number 85. Uh, a while ago, I said that Alessandro Balzan had stealthed his way up to sixth position, of course, with the problems for cars ahead of him. He's now up to fifth as our championship leader, and he's putting pressure on Corey Lewis in the 16 change racing Lamborghini. He has to actually pick his pace up a little bit because Jerome Blakemolen in the 33 Mercedes Benz, or at least in the MG GT3, I should say, is right on his tailpipes. Those two barely half a second, those three, in fact, barely a second apart and battling for position. But on the track at the moment, the leader is now through the traffic and has about a 10 car length deficit to the last car on the lead lap, and that is Joao Barbosa in the number five Cadillac, second in the championship coming in here this weekend. 19 points behind the car that leads. In the meantime, Hello. that battle I was talking about, Alessandro Balzan has gone by the change racing Lamborghini of Corey Lewis down into, uh, down into turn number three. 
And so that's now fourth position for um, Balzan. And ushering him off the road as he did so under braking, wasn't he? The uh, number 16 car left with no room at all on the outside of the corner there. But closing on both of these two notice is at number 33 Mercedes. Jerome Blekemolen is at the wheel of that car. Really good first in, by the way, by Ben Keating at the wheel of that car. Uh-oh, was that off the road? What was that? Okay, scratch that. Uh, so he's he's closed right in on uh, the, on this little group. Has Jerome Blechemol, and he is flying right now. Let's have another look at the, the replay of the Ferrari on the inside, uh, the Lamborghini outside, and he just well, under brake and Jeremy yeah. just slid across the road to yeah, the left. He, le he left him. He left him a car with uh, room on the outside. That's fair enough. Uh, the 73 part place car has dropped out of contention and down to 10th position. Shea Adam can give us this Continental Tire pit and report to tell us why. They followed in the 28 Allegra car. The 73 had a radio transmission that Jerk said there was something funny feeling on the car. They had a tire that had just slightly started to go down. So they came in, changed it, and sent it back out. Well, that's a bad look for them because that's just before they could have got to the end, I reckon, in an hour and 11 minutes. The GTDs tend to be the cars that go the furthest on their fuel. But even for them, that's too much to ask. Uh, at least one more pit stop for everybody. Stephen Simpson's just put the fastest lap of the race yeah. in, Jeremy, in the 85 cars. He tries to chase down the leading three. Uh, yeah. Meantime, Ryan DL has got ahead of Dane Cameron. So Dane Cameron has dropped from second to third with a 58.6. So that must have been a whoopsie somewhere for Cameron because he had a little bit of breathing space on Razzle Dazzle. Not much. But enough, nine seconds the gap between Jordan Tiller and the new second place. That's the number two Nissan powered Ligier. Hmm. Not many dull moments here, are there? No, not at all. Um, I'll take a breath for a moment. Oh, no, I can't because the battle for second in GTD is just heating up as Lawson Asher back, as Jeremy suggested a little while ago, has been closing down on Jack Hawks with in the 15 Lexus. Jack partnered with. Scott Pruitt this weekend in a change of change round of the driving talent for 3 GT in the Lexus team. Lexus here in force with uh, as many of the manufacturers are this weekend at Road America with uh, display of street cars. And the new coupe there looks absolutely stunning, sitting in a sort of dark grey metallic, just down at the bottom of the vendor row there by the finishing point for the zip line. And no, I haven't tried it still. I'm still claiming I'm overweight. <laughs> Shea Adams just told me she volunteers as tribute. So this battle is for second position on the racetrack. The 57 Audi in third at the moment in GT Daytona. They've just gone through the kink and heading down towards Canada Corner. The bright blue number 15 Lexus. 16 seconds, yeah, and Kling Lens Klingman. In that BMW, he's having an easy stint here. He's going to keep it pointing in the right direction. Gustavo Jakobin has just dropped into the pits from second place in prototype challenge. Haven't mentioned that class too much. Patricio O'Ward's bossed it. Well, the 38 car has bossed it right from the start, frankly. And we have uh, Buddy Rice in the pit lane, just in fact leaving the pit lane in the much delayed number 20 car. Don Yant went straight on at the final corner and did some damage to that car early on. He's in third position at the moment, but many laps down. So Jack Hawks was now up to second in the GTD class with uh, Lawson Ashton back all over his rear wing. Yep. About seven seconds back, number 63 Ferrari, Alessandro Balzan, having cleared Corey Lewis, has checked out pretty quickly. Uh, and uh, we'll see whether he can uh, reduce the deficit to those two cars ahead of him. Uh, Hawks with Ashton back, they're running about 16 seconds behind the dominant. Turn them out to what BMW number 96. Yeah, that car um, from the start, remember, it wasn't the ball setter, but it got ahead at the start and has really not had any kind of challenge whatsoever for the blue and yellow machine. Not so Jack Hawksworth at the moment. Goes underneath the Corvette Bridge to turn six. Throw some Ashen back in the Stevenson Audi. Stevenson have had a Decent run of form with both their cars. They run the Camaro in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. The Audi R8, still their weapon of choice here in the IMSA Championship. Meantime, we've got Lawrence Van Tour. No, we haven't. Yes, we have. No, check that. Okay, is that a lap? 
for that car there then. 24 BMW, yes. 24 car is John, John Edwards and he's right with Richard Westbrook. So the two Chip Ganassi cars, sorry, confused for a moment. But uh, John Edwards now right up behind Richard Westbrook for well, second no, place. That's, that's just changed because Westbrook just got past him in actual that's fact. That's why I was confused. Yeah, it is. Uh, because uh, Edwards has been slipping back uh, lately. He, he made a fabulous charge through the field, was running uh, in second place, only a couple of seconds behind the leader, that would be number 66 Ford. But that gap uh, back to the second place, well, no, no, now the teammate 67 has grown to over seven seconds yeah. over the last mm, 10, 12 laps. Yeah, my apologies. I was looking at a timing screen that had yet to update. So yes. when I, I looked for the car number, the 67 was still sitting in third position. And uh, vagary of our timing system that it takes about five seconds to upgrade when the uh, cars go through the timing points. And. Uh, that's why I thought it was Vanter, because he was the next car back, but it clearly was the BMW that had been passed. Jeremy is right, he's got the lap chart, doing it the old-fashioned way. So Joey had by now nine seconds from his teammate Richard Westbrook with just over an hour to go in GTLM. 66 and 67 Chip Ganassi racing cars have got to the front now. Can they stay there? They have been, at times, when they've needed to be, they have been frugal. The BMW is third, then the two Porsches in team formation, about another four, four seconds further back from John Edwards in the BMW, and they are racing in 9-1-2 and 9-1-1 formation there. Remember that 9-11 car with the front end of the car, the bonnet area has been signed by the whole team. It'll be presented to Jens Walther. This is his final race as the man at the head of Porsche in the US. He'll be heading to Porsche Leipzig, the McCann and uh, Panamera factory. Cayenne that built there as well, I believe. Uh, what a send-off it could be if they could get on the podium or better. Uh, chasing down at the moment, and they are fast. 2044s for both of the Porsches. 207 for Edwards, 205 for Westbrook, 204 and a half for Joey Hand. Now, having got past John Edwards, Westbrook is not pulling away, Jeremy. Westbrook's uh, got through. Now, is this another one of these Richard Westbrook pink fluffy bunny eared slippers drives again? Is he trying to wring lap times out of that car without actually using the throttle? Yeah, it could be. Um, I've also been noticing uh, late last few laps, number five car, you, might, you, you, you noticed it after the pit stop job, Barbosa came out of the pits just ahead of Jordan Taylor. Well, he's managed to pull away, but he's he not under, under any danger right now of going a lap down, so he's doing some very good laps. That number five car on the tail end of the lead lap in the eighth position. PC best lap. Uh, to Patricio or Ward. Well, that's a shocker. Yeah, 159.2. <laughs> Every single race this season, he set uh, the fastest lap in the PC class. Yeah. They do like to have a full race. weekend, don't they? Paul, fastest lap and race win. Yeah. Just, I'm just looking as well that Ryan Diel is just gently reeling in the leader as well. It's under nine seconds again now. No, it's, 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 and there's one it's more been, pit stop, isn't it's there? It's been sort of seven, eight, nine... Uh, seconds. Yes, there's one more pit stop to go. It's been seven, eight, nine seconds. Been sort of fluctuating fairly similarly. Uh, the number 31 car slipping back just a little bit in that third position, now under increasing pressure, of course, from Stephen Simpson. We did. And then see. I've been watching the gap behind that to number 22, yes. and particularly behind him, Olivier Pla, number 52 car. Yeah, we've not seen Pla light up the timing screens just yet. A 55.3 that time around. Uh, uh, just strikes me that Ryan DL, the, the 22 and the two car, Ryan DL in the number two ESM Tequila Patron, Ligia Nismo, that they, they, they did take longer at their pit stops. It seemed to take them a very long time to fill both of the cars, equally long time to fill both the cars, I should say. And I just wonder if Ryan needs to get a bit of a move on there to try and offset the longer pit stop. Last time through turn one, stout challenge and defence for what is third place with Stephen Simpson and Eric Curran. And Stephen Simpson just got to the outside but couldn't stay on the track there as Eric made the corner. Uh, Dave Cameron, excuse me, Dave yeah. Cameron in that car. 
Well, that battle heading round turn one now downhill underneath the Briggs and Stratton Bridge. Yeah, that was a moment or two ago, yeah. Jeremy, the back at the well, same point of the yeah. circuit now. And heading down to the same point of the track that we were watching on replay. If you're watching our live coverage, what great pictures. Thanks again to NASCAR Productions and our whole team, particularly our camera operators who've been out in all kinds of weather in the last couple of days. Also to our flaggers, marshals, track services and recovery teams, and indeed all the volunteers here at Road America, whether you've been on the gates taking tickets, parking cars or whatever. Thank you very much indeed for your help this weekend. Into the pit lane, the 16, Corey Lewis drops out of that battle and down through the field. Uh, maybe able to go at the end from here, an hour and two minutes, maybe not. Mm, it's going to be very, very tight, I think. I don't... I'm not sure any of the uh, GTD cars can do a full hour. Shea Adam has been talking to the Change Racing Lamborghini team. They're thinking that there might be another caution before this one is done, John. We've only had that one uh, right at the beginning, but the Change Racing people seem to think that, well, chaos might just erupt, especially if that big black cloud that's uh, moving in from behind the booth does just add water. Yeah, very good. Down and away. That was a very smart stop indeed. Uh, this from Ryan Siegler says, first time I've seen the Porsche uh, RSR with the new exhaust. We're on the outside of turn six here at Road America. They've tweeted to us at the IMSA radio. And this comment is just, my goodness me. It is good, isn't it, Ryan? It's very good indeed. And we, we try to give you the best we can with our effects, but there's nothing like being trackside when it wheels by. And also James Counter on holiday in Pembrokeshire. In Wales and tuned into IMSA TV, watching will be the early hours of the evening there, quarter past nine in the UK, watching this battle down to turn three with Stephen Simpson and Dan Cameron scrapping for third and the final podium position there as they go past the change Lamborghini, which is not up to speed yet after its pit stop and a set of cold Continental tyres. Simpson goes to the right-hand side, coming over the top of the brow at Ford, heading into five. Can he get the overlap? He can. But Dan Cameron is not about to give up his position. Is it the old over and under and up the hill? It's going to be the try. Simpson could not get the power on quite early enough to make that under the Corvette bridge stick. But these two are the closest battle on the circuit at the moment. There was 0.036 of a second as they went across the last timing loop down into eight now before the carousel at turn nine. They're on the run back home now, halfway around the circuit. Dan Cameron with a clear track ahead of him. He will like that. You don't want to see traffic when you know you've got a hard charger like Stephen Simpson behind you, and Simpson just drops the left-hand side. Continental's on the dirt coming out of the carousel. A slight mistake there, and the gap opens up by two or three prototype cars lengths. Crackle of the downshift as they break into Canada corner and Stephen Simpson flat drifting that car. We've seen Oli Pla doing that in the past and Simpson's really leaning on the Orica chassis. Now, can he get somewhere close to the back of the Cadillac as they come up the hill? Gets a good run off the final corner. No, he's nowhere near this time around. So we'll have to plan and scheme. Now, there is a little bit of traffic coming into play ahead of them. And it's Buddy Rice in the prototype challenge car, I think, that they're coming up on. 912 Porsche onto pit lane. Lawrence Vanto is in the... Uh, in behind the wheel of that, Shea Adam has this. Fuel and brand new Michelin tires for the number 912, John. They think that they're finally within a window where they can possibly make it to the end. But remember, it's a long uphill at the end of this track. And if you run out at the bottom, you're not going to see the start finish. We've also got the Ford mechanics up on the wall for the number 67. Richard Westbrook will be coming in. He knows how to make a fuel tank last, though. We saw it the last time out at Lime Rock Park. Seeming to go further than anybody else as the 912 is good to go. And does just that. That's going to be tight. That is going to be tight. 58 minutes as Jens Klingman comes in from the lead of GT Daytona and is dropping down. This will be his last pit stop 
as well, yeah, I exactly. would think. Now, I think well, 58 minutes for him is more likely than a GT Le Mans car, if oh, I'm honest. Um, yeah, I guess, it, I mean... Most Slow stop for the 96, yeah, yeah Adam. Yeah, they finished the fueling and then they were telling Jens to go and it took about another three seconds before he actually got the car moving. So that BMW took uh, quite a bit of more time on the pit lane than necessary. Back to GTD and now the battle for the lead is yes. Lawson Aschenbach and Jack Hawksmith. Hawksmith has the top spot at the moment. Oh, and a moment for our leader in prototype challenge as Patricio O'Ward had a wild ride on the hurry downs between seven and eight. As he just, uh, I don't know if he just lost concentration for a moment, just overdid it on the exit of turn seven. Eases the car back on the track, but got a, a bounce and just threw him. Seems to be exciting at turn one as well between that, that battle for third position, Dave Cameron oh. and Stephen Simpson. They were absolutely no to tell as they came past the pits to complete lap 50. Problem for the Again. Acura, another left rear puncture for the 86. This is the red car. And Andy Lally at the wheel of, uh, sorry, Jeff Siegel at the wheel of that car. That's the old red machine, and there's damage to the left rear wheel arch. So the second time that Jeff, well, he'd be, be getting good at that now, won't he? As Dan Cameron and Stephen Simpson go past the 67 Porsche, that second Richard Westbrook in GTD, uh, through the left-hand return six and down the hill. Jonathan Edward, uh, John Edwards shown as stopped on the circuit in the 24 BMW at the moment. He's gone missing from my timing screen. Wait to see if we can find him out there. 55 minutes to go. Well, what a boon this would be if we have to have a full course yellow in the next couple of laps. Number 15, Lectus on pit lane, John, leader. Just a, a quick update from the leaders who are now only 5.3 seconds. Jordan Taylor and Ryan Diel had just been told to go on to fuel safe mode to stretch to their last pit stop. And now they may not have to. Full course yellow. Full course yellow is out. And this must be then. Who was just in the pits? The 114 car was well, just in. John Edwards is showing us moving again. So full course yellow. Oh, he's got to the pit lane entrance and no further. Oh. And that's why. John Edwards, the car sitting down the 24. What a weekend it's been for them. Yeah, closed pit, closed pit, and in came, I think that was good at Jeanette in the 50. Yes, it was. So that must be emergency service. There's a lot of people here, Jeremy, yeah. who might who'll be on fumes here. Yeah, particularly the GTD cars, because they all came in on the same lap last time around. And that was, uh, yeah, well, half the race ago, lap 24. Horrible, horrible weekend for the 24 car, new engine, and that looks like the car is sitting down on the right rear in the pit lane entrance, and it just couldn't get up the hill. I wonder if that's a drive problem. John's pulled off to the right, but it's still a full course yellow because it's on the racetrack there. It's not even in the pits where the area is, and Jeff Siegel's come in under closed pits as well, but that will be counted as emergency service too if they just replaced the left rear Continental had sent him. That car many laps down anyway. So, now the problem is here, Jeremy, that I don't think the two, that, that the leading prototypes can go 53 minutes. So they need, they were on a fuel safe to try and get them to the point where they could go to the end without a splash. This is helping, but I don't think they'll necessarily pit here. So if you're further down, if you're Joao Barbosa now, you pit, you brimful it, you pit again before you go green, and then you cross your fingers. You're right on the yeah. end of the lead lap at the moment. Or has he lost the lead lap? Who are you talking about? Joao Barbosa. No, he's, he's still on the lead lap, he's, right? He's fine. Um, so yeah, all the leaders will need to make pit stops now. And you know, it's going to be a while before we get back to green. It's going to be very, very marginal, certainly, as to whether they can get to the end from here after making this pit stop and get everything cleaned up and get the back race back underway. But uh, the guys who, who the, 
the car who this will help is the number 912 GTLM Porsche, which is the only one of the GTLM cars to have made a pit stop in this sequence. Yes, I think Tony Garcia has been in as well because he was off sequence, wasn't he? So this is exactly what the number three Chevy Corvette team wanted. John Edwards' car has been moved. It's on tour. It's a getting a flat tour, so there's, there's no need to put it on a flat bed. So it wasn't a suspension issue. He's out of the pit lane now, so the pit lane can be opened next time around. Bodywork at the side of the circuit from one of the GT... D cars, I believe, but of bright red bodywork. It looks like a wheel arch extension. Um, that, I am guessing, is from the Acura. Didn't quite look the right shade of Valencia Red Pearl, but in fairness, I'm not right up to date with my uh, Acura <laughs> colour palette. So, Jeremy, this is very interesting. Mm. Yes. All right, your team, your team manager of the leading car, you're Wayne Taylor. You can't, if you pit now... Oh, you've got to pit now. Do you reckon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they don't have any option but to pit now. Um, and then uh, they'll hope for another caution before the end of the race or, or the this caution is extended or whatever. Uh, certainly... Um, Does anybody stay out of the prototypes to no. take the track position? No. OK. I just think they're a good 10 minutes away from being able to make it to the end. They pit now. If they pit this time around, and the pits will be open this time around, they are 10 minutes away from making it to the end. So they, they have to have a, a splash or a, a, another yellow. Yeah, I mean, they're on ultra fuel safe, certainly. So they'll be running you know, high gear, low revs, coasting, whatever they need to do to uh, get this best, best fuel consumption as they can. But I don't think they have any option but to come onto the pit lane. Now, it's certainly earlier than they would want, want to. But uh, this is the way the race is playing out. I don't think you can really afford to stay out there. It's such a long lap here that actually pitting now, you're not going to have a disadvantage other than potentially if, if one of the prototypes stay out, it means that you could be having to fight your way through a little bit of traffic. And one of the prototypes that does stay out is the 85 car. Stephen Simpson has not pitted. Simpson has not pitted. In has come the first and second. In fact, everybody down to Oli Pla. Uh, Renga van der Zand has come in. Has Joao Barbosa come in? I don't think Barbosa's come in either. So yes, Stevens... I, don't, I don't think he's caught up yet. Ah, good point. Uh, no, he hasn't. He stayed out. Barbosa has stayed out and Simpson have stayed out and eschewed the opportunity for pit stops. Shea Adam has this Continental Tire pit lane report as the leaders are on the lane. Very odd that the 85 did not come in because they had the pit board down and the entire crew up on the wall for that car. The 10 hits its marks, fuel and tires for Jordan Taylor. Stickers going on. Stickers going on for the 31 as well. Dane Cameron staying behind the wheel. No driver change there. For the number two, Ryan Dial getting scuffed tires going back out. The number 22, same story. 22 beats the two back out of the pit box, at least initially. It's side by side as they leave their pit boxes. They are identical. I don't know who's going to make that back out. The 22 actually spit off a little bit of bodywork as it was leaving the pit lane. 10 was the first one back out. Then Just. were the two and the 22. I don't know which one was first. Then the 31, 90, and finally the 52. As we have a BMW being pushed out from behind a split in the Shit. wall. That is the 24. That is John Edwards. Well, there was a moment there where one of the Nismos went ahead of the 10. They've obviously been told to go back and they've lined up 10, 2 and 22. It was 22, 10 and 2 as they went around the first corner. So that is a very interesting indeed. I presume that has come from their team and uh, race control. Uh, GT Daytona, by the way, it's still Aschenbach leading, but Alessandro Balzan now in second place. Uh, so did the Lexus make a stop? Yes, it did. Just before the yellow flag, Jack Hawksworth must have made a stop. He did, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, BMW. Both, both the Lexuses is, is actually came yeah, in. And, correct. And uh, I was talking to Paul Jenlows a little while ago. They were, they were struggling for fuel consumption in this race. BMW back out, but very slow. And that is the 25 of Bill Oblum, which has... Uh, 24 of John Edwards is still showing a stop on the track, but... Uh, and it hasn't shown us coming out of the pit lane, oddly. So 
don't know what's happening with our timing there. I know it takes a wee while to catch up, but that's still showing is stopped, and that car's definitely come on the pit lane. Confused myself there as I looked up again, so apologies for that. Uh, I'll get another visual on it when it comes around next time. Shea, that was the 24 car that went out the pit lane. Well, that was 25, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It Thank was you. the 24 with John Edwards and a large number eight on the side of the car as well. That would be correct because it's in eighth position in GTLM. Thank you. Um, right, timing still has that car as stopped. So, Stephen Simpson, with uh, 47 minutes to go, leads the motor race. Uh, when did he last stop? I hear you ask, dear listener. Answer, lap 39. Mm. We are now with on lap else. 52. Curious. Yeah. So, that is very interesting. He's, he stopped on lap 39. Now, where is he pitted? He's pitted beyond the pit lane, and beyond the start-finish line. So, that was the start of lap 39 that he pitted. And we are now on lap 53. So yeah, and uh, that's an interesting time. Jean Barbosa, Jean Barbosa the same. Well, had he been? I think he might have just dropped off the lead lap there. Oh, well, maybe he had. I don't know how he'd done how, how he'd done that. I guess he must have done because otherwise the uh, safety car picked him up as a race leader. Uh, Shea Adam, shed some light on this for us for the five team. Uh, for the five team. Well, remember, the five team came in to do their pit stop when everybody else came in, but then they had to come in a lap later to repair the damage to the left rear portion of that car. They did top it off with fuel when they made that stop, so he has one more lap worth of fuel. Yeah, good point. So he had fallen well back. I think he's back on the lead lap now. Yeah, but he's at the tail end. Well, he's at Correct. the tail end of it, so he'll, he'll get the, uh, the uh, pass around once the... Uh, once we go. Exactly. Uh, take a deep breath, Shea Adam, because here comes the GT uh, field headed by Joey Hunt. <gasps> okay, let's do this. Joey Hunt comes into his pit lane. He has nobody ahead of him. He's got that nice clear windshield. Will it still be that way when he goes to leave, though? They have new Michelin tires on the wall for Joey Hunt, and it will be a little bit crowded because the 67 came in immediately behind. Gosh, they were so close together. I couldn't even see Richard Westbrook's car because it looked like one giant Ford. We also have both Corvettes, so the three strategy of going off a little bit will have to pay out here. If they put just that little bit less fuel into the car, the 63 hits its marks. There are no driver changes going on for any of the cars that I've mentioned so far, except the 93 is in. That is Andy Lally getting put behind the wheel of that car. The 48, the Lamborghini, is also in. The number 912 makes a quick visit down the pit lane. They pit very recently. Remember, that was just a splash of fuel. Joey Hand goes back out. Richard Westbrook goes back out. One and two on the side of their cars, respectively. They will beat everybody else back out, except for that number 912. So Jimmy Bruni is now ahead of everybody else. Or Lawrence Mantor, sorry. As the two Fords go out, then a Corvette, then the other Porsche. And in terms of our battle leaving the pit lane for GTD, it was Park Place who got ahead of Stevenson Motorsports. So that will be a change up in the order there. Uh, the 50 is still on pit lane, getting a lot of fuel for the WeatherTech car, but that's it. Everybody else is gone. So that will shake things up just a little bit. Joao Barbosa had been lapped, I think, by the leader, or was in, about to be lapped by the leader, because he's the first car yeah, well, he must now have in been the lapped. line. Yeah. Um, and that means that Steven Simpson is now the leader, which means Joao Barbosa should get a wave by. Correct. And he will tear round, fill the car with petrol, and try and get back out again before we go green yeah, at the no, end of this stop. I'm trying to figure out what happened to Jack Hawksworth because he, we saw the Lexus on pit lane right before the yellow came out. Uh, Shay, did he... I don't know, he's probably at the far end of the pit lane from where you are. But um, did he somehow go a lap down? Did he have a long stop or...? It looked like a bit of a long stop, Jeremy, and he was in the pit lane when the caution came out, too. Uh, had entered the pit lane, and then the caution came out, so that should have helped, but maybe it didn't. Yeah, he, he may cycle round. Let's wait till they come round and find out where he is in the queue, uh, because he, all of the cars, except Jens Klingman, uh, have been in... in uh, maybe Jens was in as well. Yeah, he'd been in before. Oh, he'd been in before. He, was the first he stopped, stopped early, stop, so, yeah. Yeah. so Jens is going to... Uh, cycle back to the lead. Uh, it looks like Jörg Bergmeister is the first of the cars, cars who stopped that time out of the pit lane. That's a 73 Park, park Players Porsche, then Aschenbach, then Blake Morland in the AMG, then Balzan, who had been as high as second. 
the sides were Paul Sand in the 63. So I'm getting in the habit of just calling him by surname because that's what everybody in the team does. Sorry, Alessandro. Uh, what are the 85 team going to do with Stephen Simpson? 42 minutes to go. So now we're getting to the point where you can go to the end. Uh, in comes Joao Barbosa, having been released. See, this I think this works really well for the five car. They're back on the lead lap. If they can get that car turned round, a new set, here's the rear by starting, and there is the 15 car going right. through, Jeremy. So that is going to get a way by. So that will cycle back around. So that's what happened. It got caught uh, between its, uh, its leader and the race leader. Yeah. Fine. Class leader. Uh, just finish Thanks. my thought on the five Cadillac, Jeremy. Back on the lead lap, new set of Contis. They need to turn that car around right now. Oh, it's going to be tight to get him out. They're scuffed Contis that are going on. He got the wave by, and he's not going to get out. He's not going to get out. Shares he being held. What colours do you like at the end of pit lane? Green, 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 green. Yep, he made it you out. Telling me, it's no, he's gone. Oh really? Yeah, he made it out. Uh, wow. The light is still green, as a matter of fact, as the safety car comes by now and it goes back to red. Okay. So he will be on the back of the queue, but fueled with 41 minutes to go. And he gets a chance to go around at a slightly higher speed and get some heat into his Contis, scuffed, to go to the end. I reckon that car's good to the end. I'm really not sure about the cars that st stopped, what, six or seven minutes ago. I know they've had full course yellow. Car going behind the wall there, Shea was. OK, we'll try and get that. Uh, we'll give it a go. Acura, I'm hearing. Thank you, Shea. Uh, I think that puts Joao Barbosa in a decent position to pick off anybody who's got a fuel safe. I, I'm trying to figure out what happened to the Lexuses, though, because th they were running uh, second and three, four, five, six, seventh before the pit stop. So they both pitted right before, uh, shortly before the caution came lap out. Lap 48, they both pitted on 48. Sage Carab Which is one lap after number 96 car. Number 96 car is leading, but um, I guess somehow the... Both Lexus must have got caught behind the safety car, and I'm not quite sure how or why. I guess that because, yeah, that was really unfortunate then for that team. I guess they must have come out just uh, come out just behind the overall race leader, so they were they were trapped there. That was really unfortunate. 15 minutes of racing has been lost to retrieve a stalled car at the end, Mr. Pit Lane, but there's really nothing else you can do if you want to try and mitigate the effect of a safety car in multi-class racing you don't do that then people drop a lap back on their lap leader on their class leader and that's why it's a complicated thing to do that's why it takes the time that's why for my money code 60 works better but you get back to racing quicker and particularly with a car in the pit lane it's not as if anybody had to go onto a live track but it just doesn't seem to have taken off over here. That's no criticism of anybody. I am just putting a point out there, by the way, of the different ways that things happen so that we don't lose as much race time. Share at Adam with the 25 car. And the 24, which is still stationary on the pit lane, lost a drive at uh, the bottom of the hill. Might have been a fuel issue. Um, the 25 just did a driver change, so Alexander Sims gets to finish out the race. They gave him a little bit more fuel, and they changed the tires. So the 25 is definitely good to the end. Definitely of our GTLM contenders. Can't say that for everybody else. Indeed. And, uh, well, I think, no, I, think they'll be, I think they'll be fine to get to the end, but... Number 25 car just got back on the lead lap as a result yeah. of this caution period. So they come in there uh, get and get uh, Alexander Simpson, as you would say, John, slap him with some uh, fresh meat. And again, he's going to be at the back of the pack, of course, so he's got a lot of ground to make up. But uh, at least he is back on the lead lap because having looked pretty strong at the beginning of the weekend, all of a sudden it seemed to turn sour for BMW. So now at least one of them is in contention. And the uh, turn of most what BMW is... Uh, Looking really, 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 really good in GT Daytona. Yeah, a bit of fun and games going on in the GT Daytona 
uh, in the GTLM uh, park, the 9-1-2, Lawrence Van a lead. We've got a green flag at the front of the field, and now he closes up to the back of the prototype field. It's a single file start, and the first leader is the 85 car. There he goes, he's got cars between him and the rest of the prototype field, and there's a GT Daytona cars in there, including the leader of Jens Klingman, who's got to keep his nose clean here. Down the outside, oh, fantastic move from Pete Durani. He's gone past Jordan Taylor and up into second. The Nismo powered car beats the 6.2 car. Look, and off goes the 912. That's Lawrence. No, it's not. It's Dirk Werner. It must be the 911, isn't it? It is the 911. Werner is off in the gravel. He's not coming out of the turn one gravel. That's going to be another full course yellow. And everybody's fuel problems have just gone away. And that is awful news for Stephen Simpson and the 85 Orica car. But this could be great news for people to Rani and the rest of the guys who've just stopped because they will now be able to get to the end without having to worry about fuel saving. It's also bad news for Joao Barbosa, who was hoping... Oh, he got a tap there. Well, he was on the outside, certainly, of the, uh, of the Corvette going into the corner. That would have been the number three car, I think. Yeah. Tom Milner was still green at the moment. Oh, yes, he did get a touch. <laughs> Tom just uh, hip checked him there going in. Tom, Mind you, not, uh, he, he's in a dodgy situation there in the best of times. Put yourself on the outside yeah. of a fast corner is always, always, always dangerous. Have we gone yellow? Not yet. Can't, can't imagine they're going to leave that car there, but I may be wrong. 36 minutes to go. And full course yellow. Yellow's out on the... Oh, it's come up on the screen now as well. I was going to say Tanny's got them in her hand, so uh, I can see them at the start-finish line. Safety car board is out as well. I just want to go back to the, the safety car issue. That there's, I am not at all questioning why a safety car is needed to get people help on the track. I understand that putting marshals on the track is a very dangerous thing to do. And that's what the way it happens here. 15 minutes of lost race time, unfortunate. But that is, that is the price you pay for safety of people working to get those cars cleared or that car cleared as it was. So I'm afraid you can't have it both ways and the safety has to weigh out. There, is, there are other ways of doing it. It just doesn't happen here in the US. 911 car has got the signatures of the Porsche team for Jens Valtha, the man for whom this is his last race as boss of Porsche North America. What 67 a grit. car got past the 66 too. Change of place then for those uh, two Fords at that restart. Richard Westbrook ahead of Joey Hand. I mean, that number 66 car has been in control pretty much all weekend. Let's see what happened here. Down to turn five on the restart. Uh, the wing mirror on the 912 already at a jaunty angle. That was the Lawrence Van Tuyck car that was leading. Goes up the hill towards turn <laughs> number seven. He's driving right up the middle of the road with a Ford either side. That's yeah. fine. He picked his line so, and stuck to it. So that's I mean, the number 912 car got into the lead because it didn't need to stop. It had already stopped before that Correct. full course caution. That car was leading, and then uh, Joey Hand tried to go around the outside of him, and uh, and uh, Richard Westwood thought, said, that's fine. I'm going to go inside of you going up the hill into turn six. So it says that's exactly So the exactly Porsche swap there. position, but the, the sorry, the uh, Ford swap position, Correct. but the Porsche stayed in the lead. Just. <laughs> yeah, you see, there wasn't enough. T there wasn't enough room on the track for a, a Ford either side of the Porsche. Pick one way, guys. They were their own worst enemies there, the two Ford twins. 911 is being pulled out at a fantastically efficient pace. Porsche Cayenne GTS intervention vehicle is there, providing cover should it be needed, and I presume. The 911 of Dirk Werner will fire up and continue. Yes, the bad news for him is he's dropped off the lead lap in class. Slightest of touches. He pulled. Oh, that's so. We've seen a lot of gentlemanly driving here at the day. He's pulled off to the side of turn one, braked hard, and then accelerated hard, but done it off the racing surface, Jeremy. He pulled off the track to do that, and now he's off the racing line and he's doing exactly the same, braking hard to try and get the gravel out of the system so that it uh, doesn't go on the racing line. Uh, before we go great again, which we will do shortly, we've got 33 and a half minutes to go. Our championship leader in GTD is Alessandro Balzan in the car in fifth position. Christina Nielsen is out of the car and will share with his permanent tire pit.
Christina Nielsen, you drove so well out there today. You've stood on the second and the third steps of the podium. Today it's time for the first, but you were saying that the uh, time lost was not on track. It was in the pit stops. Yeah, we uh, definitely lost some time doing fuel. I mean, a scooter, of course, uh, nails it every time with the pit stops. They're so on point. They take care of every detail, and Alessandra has done a great job on track, but we can't have an influence on how fast the fuel goes into the car, and unfortunately that causes a position in the last uh, pit stop. No more fuel stops, though, so what can Balzan do with the Ferrari? He's ready to push, you got fresh tires, you got a full tank, and he's ready to go. Yeah, no lasagna yet, that comes after the race to celebrate, right? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the Italian superstitions. We don't uh, have lasagna the night before. Bad experiences. Well, good luck the rest of the race. Thank you. I used to be superstitious before I raced as well, uh, but touch wood, I've got rid of that now. The guys are coming back to the green flag this time around. It's a quickie caution, so we won't open the pit lane. The Corvette safety car lights are out, and Stephen Simpson gets to do it again. This time he has nothing between him and second place, but second place now is Pete Portorani with Jordan Taylor in third. So 85 Oringa, 22 Nissan, 10 Dallara. Two Ligier Nissan, then the second of the Dallara Cadillacs, the 31 car. Now, uh, I think Ryan DL might have a go at Jordan Taylor on the restart. We saw that Nissan was very, very quick off the line once he got the turbos spooled up. Stephen Simpson controls the pace in at the final corner, 31 and a half minutes to go. Live from trackside at Road America, IMSA Radio and TV together at the Continental Tire. Road race showcase. We are green flag and racing. And oh, D DL wasn't quite close enough to the back of the third place car, but Durrani was close enough to Simpson. And these two young drivers are side by side. Durrani's going to try and go the long way around into the right hander in turn one. That's a tough thing to do. He's got a heavier car, remember, but newer Continental tyres. Now goes the driver's right down the hill. Great position, but Stephen Simpson is the last of the late breakers and somehow manages to hold on. He must be getting low on fuel now. Still in third position, the number 10 Cadillac. Then it's the Nismo powered Ligier. Then the 31 of Dan Cameron. And again, these cars are side by side for the lead. And again, Stephen Simpson decides to go to the inside early on in the piece. While it's behind, there's a challenge for third place. But Ryan DL could not get past. And again, this time power. to the inside, using the power they have to go around and give each other space, and they do. That's great driving, great yep. driving by both. People to Rani had the position there, and I would have thought nine times out of ten, anywhere in the world, there would have been contact there, and both of those cars went off. But Stephen Simpson and people to Rani, sensible stuff. That's great, great racing. And, and for Durrani, he knows that Stephen Simpson's got to stop again, so yeah, yeah. there's no point really in pushing the issue. It's certainly not uh, risking any contact between the two because Durrani is certainly in the uh, in the driver's seat here. He's uh, going to take over the lead as soon as Stephen Simpson picks. And this from Tequila Patron ESM uh, to at people to Rani. Uh, the 85 is not your target. He needs to pit, so let's go, mate. So basically saying, don't race him if you don't have to. In GTLM, the 66 Ford has got by the 912. Joey Hand is ahead of Lawrence Van Tua and yeah. Richard Westbrook's back down to third there. So the Fords have swapped positions, but Joey's got ahead again. Antonio Garcia and Tom Milner now for Corvette are right in the mix towards the end of the race. Didn't we say that at the beginning of the race as well? Didn't we say that right at the beginning of the race? Don't, yeah. don't count out the... Pro oh, and one of the three Corvettes count. coming Number in, three. it's the three. That's Antonio Garcia. Drive through for... Ah, that's a drive-through for the contact at turn one. My, that's worked very quickly. Well done, the race control, for assessing that one. They've been massively quick with their decision-making today, and that's exactly as the drivers wanted. That gives the three-car 28 and a half minutes to try and fight back. So that was the touch on the 911 of Dirk Werner going into turn one. That's interesting, isn't it? Because Oh, hang on, it might have been something else here. No, that's a different replay that we're about to see. The uh, three car and the 911 got together in the first corner on the replay. Three wide going down the run to turn number five. And again, same part of the circuit with GTLM, GT Daytona and Prototype Challenge. Three of the four classes 
on the same part of the circuit at the same time and spread out using every inch of the width of the Road America circuit. Just under 30 minutes to go, Jeremy. And Pete Motorani has got by Stephen Simpson and is making his bid for freedom. Jordan Taylor, one by three seconds behind. He's fighting at the moment it's because Ryan Diel is putting pressure on him and Dave Cameron is putting pressure on him. Remember, the Cadillac, the number 10 car, takes a bit of time to get up to speed after the pit stops. They are running slightly different pressures on their tyres and it just takes them a while to get up to operating temp and pressure. That's my guess. I don't know that for sure. So he didn't at the beginning of the race. Yeah, he was fine at the beginning of the race, but on all of the restarts, and after the pit stops, he's had a little bit of problem with pace. 9-11. New leader. Yeah, people to Rani in the lead, as we said. Got past Stephen Simpson, and now he's making his bid for freedom. So Jordan Taylor, I, I was going to say Jordan Taylor will have to try and get past Stephen Simpson. He's not anywhere near him at the moment. One and three quarter seconds back. But don't forget that 85 car owes us a pit stop. And the clip from the Corvette on the 911 was very, very light, but again, just enough to unsettle it. The 911 Porsche will be a stop in 60 seconds for working in a closed pit. That was when they came back around. And Stephen Simpson's back ahead of people to Rani. Now that definitely changed. Yep. Uh, a change because I saw it when they went past. I'd seen it earlier on in the lap of the timing screen. So was that restitution or did people make a mistake? Stephen Simpson 58-1 last time around, 56-7 for people. But it was a slow early sector for people. So what has happened there? Seen by us, I'm afraid. Oh! And the Jack Hawksworth day has just gone downhill fast. <sighs> uh, excuse me, uh, Andy Lally, I'm looking at the 15 on the oh. side of a blue car. Andy Lally's day has gone from bad to worse. It has been an awful weekend for the new colours and Andy in the wall, he's moving in the car, talking to the team on the radio, just wipes his brow as he has hit the wall hard with 25 minutes to go to full course caution again. And he's coming through turn. There. He's just coming out of turn one and lost it on the exit of turn one under the Briggs and Stratton sign. Uh, not sure if he was helped into that or whether that was just the rear end spinning up. Porsche 911 is retiring, or at least it's going back into the paddock. So the stop and 60 second hold is largely academic now for that car. Just means they can take the bonnet off and give it to Jens a bit earlier. Jens Valver. Ooh, reprieve for Stephen Simpson. How much yeah. yellow flag are we going to get here? Oh. Can he make it to the end? Shea Adam, how much yellow flag do they need on the 85 car to get to the end without a stop? Well, they would need the race to end in about seven minutes before they can... Uh, OK. Yeah, he's he's well short. They're up on the wall. They've got uh, scuffed Continentals ready to go. And uh, they won't need to do a full fuel load, but they definitely need some liquid in that car. Yeah, and of course, they're going to be the back of the pack. They're going to have to come. Uh, Stephen's going to have to come past through, past, uh, past everybody uh, before. Uh, that cleanup's not going to take. To challenge everybody else. Two minutes, though, is it? It's not going to take, probably not going to take 20 minutes either. Uh, the 911, by the way, thanks uh, to the uh, Porsche team. They have told us that was a gearbox issue for the 911 after that contact with the three uh, Corvette. Uh, came in, worked on it, couldn't fix it, had gone back. There will be uh, no fairy tale ending for that. The Still wondering why the number 85 car didn't come in with everybody else. Uh, well, they were expecting him, on. Jeremy. They had the pit board out. Yeah. Shea, Shea, I, I didn't imagine that. They had the uh, pit board out for the, for the 85. Pit board out and all the crew guys up on the wall, too. They were shocked when they didn't see their yellow car coming down the pit lane. Communication problem or something like that, Che? Oh, that's the only thing I can think of, Jeremy, yeah. Not entirely sure what it is, okay. but uh, they don't seem to be having an issue talking to Stephen now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe somebody told him the cricket score. <laughs> the uh, in PC, good one. In, in PC, uh, by the way, uh, Gustavo Yakerman in, in the bar one car, car number 26, he's got himself back on the lead lap as a result of that uh, most recent caution period. 
So and he's not that far behind number 38. Jeremy, look on the uh, look on the wall there around uh, Andy Lally's car. Uh, he's moved the concrete blocks there, and that is going to require some remedial work. So we might be under yellow flag for a little mm -hmm. while. And they're looking further back up the track as well, grabbing pieces of car to clean that up. Uh, a sorry end for the 93 car. Yeah, I saw the 15 on the side of the car, which was the yes. car's position, of course. And and uh, I'd, you know, you, you I, uh, I, I did exactly straight the away thought, oh, yeah. it talks within the 15, but of course it's not. It was 15th position. Uh, this is the new Nouvelle blue colour for this weekend for the 93, which has now had two big accidents. <laughs> Matches the record truck, though, which is nice. <laughs> Dear. I'm trying to get some positives out of that. Yeah, well, because it's been, it's been a fabulous run for that number 93 team. They've uh, you know won a couple of races recently. They've had a podium finish. They got themselves up to the uh, third position in the points, and you know not that far out. And for Acura, uh, they were up to just six points off the lead in the manufacturers' championship. And with the excuse me, with the 86 car also having difficulties today, they're going to lose a lot of ground in the manufacturers' standings. I'll tell you what, this is great news yes, for the 73 yes. Porsche. Remember, they had a an issue and drop way, way down, having been up in the top five. And York Bergmeister now is in the queue behind Jens Klingman with a shot at a victory here. Still there, and have been there all day, Stevenson. Mike Johnson's 300th race on the pit wall here. Is this going to be a fairy tale story for there? What about Jerome Blakemore in the 33 Mercedes-Benz? Fourth position in GT Daytona. And Alessandro Balzan, you said a Conti's in a full tank of fuel for the 63 championship leading Ferrari. But how about this for the hard charger story of the day? Uh, disqualified from the qualifying session, Paul Miller Racing start at the back of the field. They've bounced around in the midfield of GTD, now in sixth position with Brian Sellers, who is a hard-charging driver, and he is still in with a chance there on the restart. We know that restarts here can cause all kinds of fun and games. I think back, what, 12 months <laughs> to where we had a couple in the dying moments, and there was a big shuffle round of positions. Now, at the front of the field, Leader there's in the pits. Eight, 85's come in for emergency service here. The pits are still closed, aren't they? The pit lights are still flashing to signify that the pit lane is closed. Now, I'm going to keep an eye on how long they fuel it for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. OK, now he's going a little bit longer. You're supposed to only do five seconds worth of fuel. He did about nine seconds worth of fuel, but uh, yeah, pits are definitely, definitely still closed. And the red light is on at the pit lane exit. So he, he will have to stop, and I'm sure that Stephen has seen that. Yes, he has. He comes to a halt. He'll have to go right to the end of the line. The, P, the pits will not open this time around, so there won't be a, a chance for anybody to pit, and that means there won't be a chance for Stephen to cycle through any of... Uh, those other cars. Let's, before we go green, have a word with Johannes van Overbeck, Pete Modorani leading the race for the 22 Nismo powered Ligier. Well, Johannes, we've got uh, about 20 minutes left in this race. It's the tw two and the 22 are right up there in the front, and your car just happens to be leading. Uh, think that you guys can pull this off. Fingers are crossed. Uh, I got one of the best closers in the business behind the wheel and Pipo. Uh, car's been great. Uh, we're good on fuel, so uh, I think we're in good shape. What's it going to take to hold off that 10 Cadillac? Well, they're certainly the class of the field, so it's going to take uh, a lot of aggression and some risk by Pipo, and hopefully hopefully he can pull it off. And best finish here is third in IMSA competition three times. Hopefully Johannes can beat that today. I would think one of the things that will help them is if Ryan DL can get the jump on Taylor at the start, as Pipo Durrani did uh, on the last restart. Or was it the restart before last? Sorry, we yellows breed yellows, don't they? Yeah. Uh, and by the way, you're just talking about uh, GT Daytona contenders. Don't count out Ble Jerome Blechemolen here in that number 33 no, 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 no. Mercedes because he, he's been absolutely flying. In fact, I believe he set the fastest lap of the class uh, as well. And we saw that uh, Ben Keating did a fabulous first stint in that number 33 car. And Blechemolen, talk about uh, great finishers. He's certainly a great finisher. And he's in fourth position. Lights are out on the safety car, I think as they go through the carousel. Let's just wait to get a, another look at it. It I'm wouldn't surprise sure. me at all if we were going green this time well, around. In that case, I mean, 
the last yellow was a quickie, in which case the pits aren't opened. Yeah. This therefore would not be a quickie, so the pits would have been... I, oh. I think perhaps the, maybe the pits weren't closed when number 85 car came in. I don't think that's going to be an issue. The and lights were still on, definitely. Where? On the pit lane. At the end of the pit lane? Yeah. Sure, no, no, because no, no, cars no, no, are no, still The flashy lights that tell the teams that the pits are closed. Oh, were they? Right, OK. I was curious. Uh, 93 car being cleared off through one of the bricks in the concrete wall to that flatbed has used that and that will come back on the infield and indeed the safety car lights were out my eyes weren't deceiving me we are within the final 30 minutes of the race aren't we so last 30 minutes of the race jeremy so yeah so it's now go fast or go home and pete Durrani will be desperate for his teammates to get by that number 10 cadillac we've seen just that opening two or three laps for the Cadillac, difficult for them to get up to full speed. For the 10 car, that is, for the 10 car. They do seem to have been just a little bit uh, off the pace. I think it's just a grunt of the Nissan, to be honest. He's got plenty of horsepower, and it, I think Even just... when he came out of the pits, Jeremy, on, on the green flag pit stop, he was down a, uh, one and three quarter seconds a lap before he got... It was only the first two laps, exactly as they did in qualifying as well. And the pits were definitely closed when the 85 came in, so okay. that was emergency service. Okay. Right, we're going back to green flag. We're on green flag now. The power has been applied by everyone at the front of the field. And here comes Ryan DL. He's got a decent run. Is he close enough? He might be. He goes to the right-hand side, looks once, looks twice, but no, he can't get along the inside. First three have broken away from Dan Cameron, who's in uh, third, fourth position in that wheel and engineering car, and Renge van der Zander has got company behind him, that's Oli Pla. Oh my goodness, what a cast for the run to the flag here. Durrani, Taylor, DL, Cameron, van der Zander, Pla and Barbosa. What a seven driver train that is. And they have broken away from the GT field that is headed by Hand, Vanto, Westbrook, Milner, Sims, Garcia, the top six pretty much together there. Ford, Porsche, Ford, Chevy, BMW and Chevy or Corvette, BMW and Corvette should I say. And once again, people Durrani, king of the cool tyre restarts, has cleared out and Jordan Taylor again has dropped a second and a half before we've done a full lap of racing here. That's exactly what's happened the last couple of times. Has to bring those tyres up to temp a little bit more circum in a more circumspect yeah. manner. And let's not forget, you know, there's only uh, a, a couple of races left in the championship after this weekend. So for, for the Taylor brothers, bringing it home in second place, but just do, just do just fine. Thank you very much indeed. Their, their sights are on the end goal. That is the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Last 15 minutes of the race, don't forget to Michelin Post Race Tech coming after the chequered flag for our IMSA Radio listeners. Use the hashtag MichelinPRT to at IMSA Radio for your questions, points arising, or just general observations. And our Spirit of the Race Awards. Your nominations, please, to at IMSA Radio using the hashtag RA for Rhoda Moringa, R-A-S-O-T-R. R-A-S-O-T-R for Spirit of the Race. There's some comeback stories here, aren't there? What about the brand new leash here for Visit Florida Racing? In currently in fifth with Van der Zander pushing. Return to form for the Nissans as well here. Stephen Simpson, by the way, is coming to the pits as he has to do for full service. Wouldn't have been able to go to the end even with that five seconds of fuel. He won't need a full tank, but he's so still going to lose time. So is number 15 car of uh, Jack Hawksworth. Right. Well, he, was at, he, he was at the back of the line. He last stopped at lap 48, so he was one of the first stoppers it's before a, that I think yellow it's a penalty. flag. I think it's a penalty. Uh, right. Because he didn't stop in his pit, I don't think. Okie dokie. So, near, so, and yet so far, the 85 car have taken them out of the fight here and there's a certain sense of resignation. And Stephen Simpson is getting the fuel that will take him the last 13 and a half minutes. Didn't even bother firing a new set of tyres onto that car there as it goes out. No, there's not much point. I mean, even if there's another yellow now, 
Uh, just going to leave no time at all for him to work his way through all the GT traffic. But still, made a point again, has uh, Stephen Simpson, JDC Miller Motorsports. The car is super fast and uh, they might not be able to continue their podium streak today, but it's still been a really strong run for them. And let's not forget, of course, we're going to be running a second car next season. Announced that a week or so ago. That's tremendous news for this championship. In the GT Tier Tourna field, Jens Klingman has pulled out 2.6 seconds from Jörg Bergmeister, but then the Audi of Aschenbach, the AMG of Bleakermolen, the Ferrari of Balzan, Brian Sellers in the Lamborghini, all of those cars in very, very close company. So second down to sixth position in GT Tier Tourna, absolutely nothing between them. As Durrani now has pulled out 3.2 seconds of the lead. And he's just said his best lap of the race as well. But Jordan Till has just set that car's best lap of the race, Jeremy, of 55.2. Yep. So now, after those first couple of laps, now the Continental Tires are coming in. For some reason, the Kanika Minolta team do seem to like to just under pressure their tires a tiny bit when they come back out of the pit stops. Ryan Diel has not been able to make the move early on, and I now think he'll struggle. He's fighting off Dan Cameron. So Nismo Ligier, Delara Cadillac, Nismo Ligier, Delara Cadillac, then the two global Ligiers with the Gibson Motors in, Van der Zander and Oli Clark. As, who was that coming in? Number 16 car, they've had uh, difficulty in the second half of the race. Real shame for that chain racing team. I haven't qualified that car on the pole, Drew and Mool, and uh, since then, it's gone downhill a bit. But uh, again, they've shown the pace in that car in qualifying. Be good fodder for them moving forward. Just after four o'clock in the afternoon, threatening clouds on their way in. 11 and a half minutes to go. Let's hope that they don't bring a premature end to this event, the Continental Tire Road Race Showcase here at Road America, live trackside with IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Durrani is really getting his head down and making that uh, this more powered to Tequila Patron Ligier fly at the moment. There's a lot of blue on the, t on yeah, the uh, scoring screen. That means fastest sector time to a whole bunch of different cars. Yeah. Alexander Sims has just put the best in class for GT LM in, in the 25 BMW at 2027. That's hauling in race trim as well. There's a point for fastest lap. Let's not forget and with how tight some of these championships are. That might be important by the time we get the Petit Le Mans towards the last winning moments of the season. At the moment, Stephen Simpson has that point overall with a 54-0, but people Durrani is knocking on the door of that. Oli Pla's not uh, been as quick as I expected him to do, if I'm honest. Expected him, he yes. was my pick for fastest lap on the uh, podiumpredictor.com, powered by IHG Rewards Club. And we'll be opening the podium predictor competition for VIR in the next few days. www.podiumpredictor.com. All the details there. If you've been playing this week, you're playing against AJ Almondinger as our guest expert. Go to www.portypredictor.com, powered by IHG Rewards Club, to see how you do at the end of the weekend. Sh Shea, I seem to remember, tipped the 10 from the 2 and the 22. So you haven't got them on the right order, Shea, but you've got all the three prototypes at the moment. Dang it. I wish I got credit for just getting them on the podium, but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be one heck of a finish. It's not over yet. And looking at the radar screens, there's like a, a pimple of rain that has just popped up. It's within two miles of the circuit, and it's getting pretty dark. Oh, dear. The R word was used there by Shea. She may be drummed out of Road America. No splash at the moment. Joy Hand as Lawrence Fantua tenaciously holding on there, eight tenths of a second. Should be no problems for fuel for these two. They can go full rich to the end, turn everything up to 11. Turbocharged Eco Boost engine for the Ford Flat Six, normally aspirated four litre for the Porsche, of course. Meanwhile, further down the field, Tommy Milner has got Alexander Sims 
right behind him as they battle for the first pot, uh, position off the podium, fourth. And it is the four Corvette in there at the moment. Jörg yeah. Bergmeister is not able to close the gap to Jens Klingman in GT Daytona, the BMW number 96 of Turner Motorsport. Well, that car has looked good all day and it's looked good, looking good now when it really counts. Yeah, very true. The uh, the lead, by the way, in GTL, and number 66 car isn't pulling away from no, not at all. Your Lawrence Van Tour, is he? Van Tour is doing it. In yeah. fact, he's just done his fastest lap of the race at a 203 189 against Joey Hand, who's just done his fastest lap of the race at a 203 194. So that tells you how closely matched those two cars are. See, when people have to push and you see how far fast the car can really go, that's when you realise how well Simon and Scott and the rest of the guys who do the technicals and the BOP, that's when you realise how well they have worked. Because when everybody is on full rich and it's all turned up to 11 and everybody's hot, sweaty and adrenaline fueled, then nobody's leaving anything on the table. And that's when we see that the two different cars at the front of the field, the Ford and the Porsche, are within fractions of a second of each other on the same circuit in the same conditions at the same time. A bravo and a chapeau to the IMSA technical team. Durrani is impressing me. I've had a high regard for people for a while, but he is now still four seconds ahead of Jordan Tiller. He's just pushed his fastest lap in as well. Tiller, a 54.5, and that's the first time since the restart that Jordan Tiller's taken time out of the leader. And Durrani will start hitting traffic shortly around this 4.048 mile circuit. Six and a half minutes to go. Jeremy Shaw and John Hindoff in the IMSA broadcast centre share Adam, our continental type pit lane reporter. Her next job should be interviewing the winning team should be. Is there more pit lane drama to come? Let's hope not. Should be four more laps, I reckon, or three after this, anyhow. Oh, it is getting dark. It is getting dark. Pete Mortarani. Another good first sector. Just a note that uh, Jack Hawksworth just put the Lexus RCF GTS to that position of having the point for fastest lap in GT Daytona at 2.07399. And he is in 10th position. Not going to catch anybody there. Going to Jeanette well ahead of him, 25 seconds ahead of him. But proof if proof were needed how quick that Lexus can be. Yeah, very true. The, uh, the battle for second place, by the way, uh, actually getting a little bit closer on that lap to uh, Jens Klingman, but I think he's got everything under control. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but uh, the, the, the rest Not of them are closing up. Never knows when to give up. No, the rest of that group are all closing up, second, third, fourth, uh, fifth and sixth. Yes, but from second down to, which is Bergmeister down there in the Porsche, down to Sellers in the Lamborghini, in sixth is a couple of seconds, really, isn't it? Two and a half seconds, so you're right, Jeremy, that is close. Hello. A little mistake from Dan Cameron last time at turn five means he's dropped away from Ryan DL. 4.8 seconds as a slightly slow lap from Jordan Taylor last time has allowed Ryan DL to close to 1.3 seconds. Now, this could get interesting. And that mistake from Dean Cameron has allowed Frank and van der Zander and Oli Platt to close up on him. So the leading trio, well, Durrani's away a little bit. The battle's for second and third, and then fourth, fifth and sixth pretty close as well in terms of the prototypes. Four and a half minutes to go. Why is it we always get a grandstand finish here at Road America so many times that I've pretty much lost my voice in the last five minutes? And it's happening again here. Durrani must keep his nerve and his cool and his professional. Our keys to the race in the Michelin countdown to green, remember earlier on, manage the traffic. And Durrani will have to manage that traffic before the end of the race. And that five seconds that he got now could disappear in the blink of an eye if he gets the wrong side of a car he's trying to put a lap on. Or worse. If you're too conservative, that can cost you time as well. It's getting that balance right between aggression and conservatism. Be decisive, make sure the car has every chance to see you, that you're going by. Joao Barbosa, 155-0, that's 
the number five Action Express Cadillac's fastest lap of the race, but he's 2.3 seconds away from Van der Zander now, who's pressuring Dean Cameron for fourth, Cameron 2.6 behind, Ryan DL in second, in third, excuse me, but in the number two car, he's only eight tenths away from the Cadillac. And, oh, that's where, last time around, the 52 of Oli Pla lost a bit of time behind Jack Hawksworth going into the carousel and indeed lost a position as he fell off the circuit. So Pla now is behind Barbosa. That's where that happened. Jack Hawks with an unwitting pick there. Just blocked out Oli Pla. Of course, he drives for Chip Ganassi in the Ford GT in the WEC. Our leader is in traffic, goes up the inside of Tristan Fortier going into turn number six in the multicolored Sun Energy AMG GT. Gap now just under five seconds again as Jordan Taylor is picking up the pace once more. Well, he has to because he's got Randy L on his heels right now. People very careful. Be, uh, white flag next time around, I think. At the end of this lap. Uh, yes, yeah. I think, yeah, you're right, Jeremy, it will be. So there's half a lap plus four miles for Pete Durrani. What a race restart from Durrani. Basically won that on the first of the restarts when he drove around the outside of the then leading Cadillac of Jordan Taylor. And he's been able to control it through the subsequent couple of restarts and now to the end of the race. A minute and 46 seconds on the clock, the white flag is in hand. Let's see if it is waved. My goodness, this will be an historic victory in the new prototype formula for 2017. 4.048 miles. There have been nothing but Cadillacs on the top step of the podium. Thus far, at the moment, the best Cadillac is in second place and is under pressure from Ryan Diel, who's under three quarters of a second behind Jordan Taylor as they go into the last lap in GTLM. Joey Hand has the same sort of gap between himself and Lawrence Vanter in the Porsche number 912. Those two are battling right the way through and they've yet to see the white flag. In GT Daytona, it's 3.2 seconds between Klingman and Bergmeister, BMW and Porsche for the lead, but then per many one for three or four cars to get on the podium because there's not a second between any of the next four cars. The clouds, the, the clouds are gathering. It's looking ominous. But at the moment, with the white flag out, we're going to go the full. Two hours and 40 minutes, and indeed a bit more, because the time has now elapsed. The white flag is out for the GT Le Mans leader. Joey Hand knows that he's only got one more lap to hold off Lawrence Van Tour, the 911 behind the wall with gearbox problems. Chip Ganassi looking at two cars Corvette on the podium. BMW absolutely tied together as they head towards turn one. The Corvette defending that inside. That's for fourth position. Yes. Tommy Milner in the four from 25 Sims. The leader in traffic with the 48 Paul Miller Racing. Lamborghini ahead of him as he comes round. Oh, they've hit! <laughs> turn four, turn three, the Corvette and the BMW were tied together, but they have hit. And once again, Tommy Milner is out in the dying stages. He will lose that position at the checkered flag, though. It's history made, the first non-Cadillac victory in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship of 2017. And it's the Nismo-powered Ligier of extreme sports have gone through. The Tequila Patron car have won it. And Sims coming from a long way back has clipped Tommy Milner and spun him round in turn three. There's damage to both cars. That will be, I'm sure, reviewed after the fact. Two Nismo powered leasers from ESM on the podiums. The meat in the sandwich is Jordan Taylor. Patricio Ward makes it a continuing season sweep for the 38th Performance Tech prototype challenge team and we'll wait for 
GTLM and GTD still to come around. Joey Hand with only eight tenths of a second on Van Tour, can't afford a slip. Here he comes to the final corner. Van Tour is going to take a huge run at the final corner. It's got very cold, there's wind, there's rain in the air, but it hasn't affected the victory of Pimo Durrani, and it's not going to rain on Ford's parade either. Through comes Joey Hand to win for the 66 Chip Ganassi team. Van Tour second. Richard Westbrook will come through in third. Just waiting for the BMW to come through and confirm their dominance. And it has been a very, very impressive run by Turner Motorsports for the GTD category. He's got two seconds on the rest of the field. Let's go to Shea Adam. Johannes Van Overbeck, he celebrated with the whole crew, said to every single crew member, congratulations, you are so happy that it's 1-3 for the team. Both cars on the podium, but a monkey off the back. You guys are the first non-Cadillac to win. Yeah, it wasn't easy. Uh, the ESM Patron guys never give up. We've been working really hard. Crew guys did a great job. Our engineer, Matthew and Kyle, gave us a great setup this weekend. And uh, just wish Ed Brown was here to share it with us. Well, his name is still on the car, so it's still a moral victory for him. Congratulations and enjoy the celebration. Thanks, Shay. 25 car has come across the line, Jeremy, missing the left front wheel entirely. And significantly, uh, even more so than that, number three car, Antonio Garcia, the championship leader, let's not forget in GTLM, therefore made up two positions on that lap. So that is great news to, uh, that it's what, three extra points uh, for that number yeah, three Yeah, because team. Tommy Milner got back on the track and has overtaken Alexander Indeed. Sims yes. after that coming together. So Tommy Milner not out of the race. He got the car back off the slippery grass at turn three and came round. But let's talk about... People, Durrani, the 22 crew, Jeremy, that is history being made. Uh, Johannes van Overbeck did his bit. Ed Brown's name still on the door of that car, as Shea rightly said. The man who's put so much into this team, along with Scott Sharp, ESM Tequila Patron. What a victory. And people, Durrani, really set that in motion at the first of the restarts. Let's go down to GTLM. Joey Hans won that. Dirk Muller in the pit lane with Shea. Dirk Muller, you started off yesterday with the pole position. You got that last year, too, but you didn't get the win last year. You got it today. How does it feel? Oh, that's a big relief here, right there. Big thanks to the whole team for Chip Ganesi Racing. Really rocks. And um, I mean, it, they gave us the car really to, to win this year. Oh, Joey did an awesome job. My nerves are killing me. I'm not good watching, I, I can tell. Um, well, well, the good news yeah. is that you guys move up in the championship even more. The second place car had some troubles on the final lap, so now you're back in the championship hunt too. Absolutely, that was a big, big point swing today. And um, that's what we were talking about all, all weekend. So we needed that win so bad. And um, no, I'm really, really happy here. And Joey did a fantastic job, absolutely fantastic. Congrats. Tony Dezino tweeting at IMSA Radio and pointing out that is the sixth GTLM manufacturer winner at Road America in six years. Corvette, Porsche, Ferrari, Viper and BMW going before the Chip Ganassi Ford victory there. An extraordinary final lap for the BMW of Alex Sims and Tommy Milner with Alex Sims coming across the line without a front wheel. The left front wheel completely gone, not without a tyre, without a front wheel. The car running pretty much with the disc on the ground there. And he dropped down to sixth position. Tommy Milner with a damaged number four Corvette got pointing in the right direction. But Tonio Garcia and Jan Magnussen's car, and it was Tonio in the car at the end, will come home in fourth position just off the podium. They'll feel like that was a victory today because they were not in the hunt at any stage. And they've come home with fourth place points. So yeah. Jeremy, and, some and points. extended their lead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, have extended their lead in the yeah. championship, have they? Well, let's go with GTLM first of all, then. Yeah, uh, 239 points, I reckon, now for G G Magnussen and Garcia to the 231 of Dirk uh, Mueller and Joey Hand, who've moved ahead of Bill Oblin and Alexander Sims by one point. I, I think Alexander Sims got the fastest lap uh, of the race in the... GTLM category, yes, it deserves worth an extra point, but they're still one point behind, I reckon, uh, Hand and Mueller. Fourth place will be the Westbrook Briscoe Ford, another five points further back. And in the, the manufacturers, let me figure that out quick now. Uh, Ford, Porsche. Ford, That's Porsche, Ford, Chevrolet. Yeah, Ford. 
Porsche, Ford, Chevrolet. So uh, that is going to be, oh, I reckon that's actually going to put Ford in the lead by a point over Chevrolet. All of these points are provisional, of course, uh, till after post race tech here. And uh, also the results are made uh, uh, made official. Yeah, 254 to 253, Ford over Chevrolet. What a great race. Now, what about the uh, prototype category? Jordan Taylor and his yeah. brother Ricky came in with 19 points of a lead. Yeah, it's now uh, 26 points over Barbosa and Filipaldi. So uh, that's not quite insurmountable, but not far short of it. So a great day for the Taylor brothers. They'll, they'll be disappointed not to win the race, of course. That's why they come to the races, is to win. But uh, this is a great points day for them. They score uh, a lot more points than, any, than, their, than their closest contenders. So I reckon 258 for the Taylors, 232 for Barbosa Filipaldi. GT Daytona, what a, what a day for the 96 Turner BLM. BMW, uh, Shea Adam has Will Turner, the man with his name above the door. <laughs> well, Will Turner, I don't know how you keep on doing this. You keep creeping up and coming out of nowhere, winning these races. These boys you got here this weekend, though, the JKs, they seem to do the job and do it well. Yeah, so uh, a little bit surprised to be up here, not by uh, because of just what I watched, because these guys were flawless, but coming into the weekend, we didn't know what kind of car we were going to have, and kind of everything worked out our way, and... Uh, Jesse and Jens, what a great pair, and the pit stops, we nailed it, and uh, just, it's our day today. Sometimes it's your day, it's our day, and hopefully we can do it again sometime. Congratulations, and good luck at VIR. Oh, what a race. Uh, two on the podium for ESM, uh, two on the podium for Ford in GTD. It was BMW, Porsche, and Audi. Don't forget, let's have your questions and your nominations for Spirit of the Race, please, to at... Uh, IMSA Radio, hashtag Michelin PRT for Post Race Tech, hashtag R-A-S-O-T-R for your nominations for Spirit of the Race. We'll be uh, handing the PA over to Tony Laporte in a moment for the formalities. Just see if we can get the, uh, the PC guys before we go off the air. The Performance Tech winners, Patricio Award, continuing that season sweep so far for the 30-year team. And Jeremy has this. In GTD points, uh, certainly the uh, uh, Christina Nielsen and uh, Alessandro Bantan, they'll lose two points of their advantage, but they're 15 points ahead still going to the final three races of the season. In manufacturers, however, I think that... Mercedes will be now just one point behind Ferrari in that GTD Manufacturers Championship. Well, it's time for us to bid you farewell as far as our broadcast here at the circuit is concerned. Three weeks' time for VIR. It's the GT Showcase. It'll be another cracker if you can't join us. Then make sure you are watching and or listening on IMSA.TV and IMSA Radio. Thank you, Road America, for your hospitality, for your fabulous racetrack, and for the entertainment that we've had throughout the Continental Tire Road Race Showcase. It's been a joy to broadcast it live here on IMSA. The radio.